Okay, so uh, today is actually the third session. So uh, <clears throat> as usual, how, how it works is that um, every session, right, there will be lesser and lesser people. And there will be, uh, yeah, of course, right. So there might be some reason behind this. Either the person speaking is crap, or the second reason is that they don't find meaning coming in here anymore, which might also be the meaning, which might also mean that the person speaking is crap. Right, so, uh, <clears throat> no issues. Uh, I'm, I might not be the best speaker or whatsoever, but I, I try, I try. Okay, so most importantly is that we try, right? So, uh, Code Workshop 3, uh, we will be talking about the second part, the second installment to PHP and JavaScript. Right, the first installment to JavaScript, of course. Actually, yeah. So just some house, housekeeping. Uh, no food or flavored drinks in this place, yeah. And we've got mineral water down here for to help yourself with. Uh, the Wi-Fi password is, uh, the Wi-Fi SSID is Ninja, and the password is password, of course. Uh, if you are shy or anything, you can, and you don't feel like asking, raising your question, raising up your hand to ask question, you can also ask me through this uh, convenient platform called Ask FM, right? Uh, you can ask me personal questions, but I might not answer them. But uh, uh, any normal technical question, I'll just uh, uh, when I see it, I'll just answer it immediately, right? Okay, so no no issues if you don't feel like raising up your hands to ask questions. There's always this Ask FM platform for you to ask questions, right? Uh, I strongly encourage you to ask questions if you have any, right? Because if you if you are lost and someone else is also lost and both of you don't ask a question, both of you will be lost and both of you wouldn't come back anymore. So I'll cry, right? And then I'll yeah, and then I'll cry and hold it. Yeah, so uh, please, please, please ask questions if you have any, right? So uh, just a quick introduction by myself again, if you have not seen me before. Name is Hui Ren, so I'm an open source advocate in uh, living in Singapore, living and breathing and eating in Singapore, right? Uh, my Twitter handler, you can ask me questions as well. If you have any questions regarding a web, web programming, anything, just ask me. Or you can email me a question if you would like, right? So we have Chun Hao today who will be helping us do the, the guy in front over here. He'll be also helping us with uh, with your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to approach any of us, right? Yeah, so uh, just a really quick recap of what we did last week. Uh, just a show of hands, who, who, who's the first time coming here? Anyone? No one. Okay. Okay, good. So just a very quick recap of what we learned last week. Uh, we learned about responsive design. So how we can use max width, how we can use like uh, these things to actually help us customize our our website to become more skill, uh, skilled to mobile designs and tablet design and smaller screens, bigger screens, to any size of screens, right? To make it uh, seamless for all platforms and look good, right? Because when when it comes to mobile, you need the pictures to be bigger, right? You need to have it have bigger space and things like that, right? Um, so we also learn about PHP uh, operators and the if else statements. So just a very quick, you have the dollar sign there, which is a decoration for the variable, and so dollar sign in variable in underscore variable equals five, which declares a variable, and also Remember that you've got the angular bracket question mark PHP to declare the start of the PHP document, right? Uh, we've also learned modulus, things like that, if else structure. So if, else, if, else, things like that. This, uh, just remember that this kind of logical comparison exists, right? Uh, well, you might not remember everything very clearly, but you just need to know that this thing exists, right? You need to know how they work. You don't necessarily need to know what is the exact code, but you just need to know these things as this, right? That's something that you must keep in mind, right? Uh, and as well as loops. So for loop, while loops, for each loops, 
these three different loops we have in PHP. And of course, in requests, we've got uh, method URI version post. So uh, remember, we've got get and post, right? So get and post are the different type of methods available. There's also put, delete, and etc. But uh, uh, just remember there's post and get, all right? So that the very quick summary of the difference between get and post. For get, uh, as you know, it can be the request can be cached, and it's shown in the URL of the browser, right? Uh, for post, it's never cached, and it's not shown in the URL of the browser, right? So that's the that's that's the really a uh, really quick summary of what we've learned last week. So we're gonna play some game, right? As you know, so we've prepared a quiz for you to play, and we've got things to give away again, the same old T-shirts that. Uh, we've not given out, right? So let me s type in kaput. Right, I think. Uh, right, right. So, are you kidding me? Okay. This is uh. This is a bit of a problem. Let Let me just unplug my thing first. Okay. Let me unplug and then log in. Can can we can we blank screen? Change to GTA. No, no, he he pick up. Okay, so oh oh, I'll I'll plug out. I plug out already. Okay, first. You know why or not? Why? You scared of email? No. I retarded. Why? This is my password file. Why do you have a password file? You should know. Someone like you should know where to get not to keep It's password. better than. Yeah, sure, sure. So let's play. So uh, visit kahoot.it. Visit this URL called kahoot.it. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, just just this URL here. So kahoot dot it, kahoot, kahoot. So I think it sounds like an owl or something. So like, uh, owls are related to like, you know, people always say that owls are wise, very wise creatures, right? Uh, so yeah, kahoot dot it. Everyone in the website already. Good. So uh, let's. I'm gonna press play. And then it's gonna open up, and there will be a code there, as usual. Since you are, it's not your first time here. I guess. Ooh. So yeah. Okay. So the code is. Connecting seven nine four one eight one. Time to buy some forty. Right, that's six digits. Okay. So we've got you know XD SK KF Smiley Face four zero four Depot. What? Okay. Very creative names, except a real name, I think. Jun Xian. Okay, I guess it's someone here. Alright, so how, how many people are in this room actually? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we should have around 17, right? Uh, if it does, if there's eighteen, it's wow. Really, my name. <laughs> <laughs> so seventeen, maybe around seventeen. Everyone ready? Get set. Get set. Uh, maybe I count. Okay, okay. No, now it makes sense. So, so that's it, right? That's it, right? Yeah, that should be it. Uh, I'm gonna press the start button. 
start. Okay, so uh, 19 questions. Wow. So, uh, what is responsive design? <laughs> oh, this is simple. This is so simple. A type of design that responds to user input. Design that provides interactive experience. Designing experiences for different screen sizes. A type of minimal design. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right, great. So eight of you got it right. That's uh, that's less than half and uh, quite good, I guess. Okay, so uh, a type of design that responds to user input. Um. Uh. Um. I don't know what to say. Honestly. So uh, yeah. So responsive design skills with your user screen sizes and also it's uh it's really about designing different exp uh, so there's this term called UX UI or whatever you want to call it. So UI represents what what uh what what uh UX represent experience, right? So uh so people design like UX experiences, they call themselves people who design for experiences. Design for something, right? So um yeah Using media queries and all, you can do that, right? So, wow, we've got two that is one, right? Ha ha. And we've got me leading in the fifth place, right? Apparently, I'm playing. Yeah, right. So, why is responsive design important? Anyone knows? I don't know. So that everyone will be able to build your site. Ensures ease of accessibility across platforms. Ensure good UX across platform. It isn't important. So I, I think, I think if someone presses like the green one, they need to kill themselves. Okay, so luckily we got zero here, and majority are correct. Right. Uh, okay, so it's okay. Uh, website, right? Everyone can build your website as long as it's on the internet, right? Everyone can build it, right? Uh, whether or not it's designed for the particular screen is another story, right? So that's the thing we want to focus on. And that's about ease of accessibility across different platforms, right? And of course, ensuring a good uh, user experience. Ah, I remember what it used, UX really. It represents user experience, right? Uh, user experience across platforms. Right, so we got Debo and 2, finally at 2. Right, and I'm in the fourth place. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so question number three, how can responsive design be achieved? Oh, this is this is so easy, right? Uh, I think by flipping tables. Hmm. Questionable, right? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two using media query, right? So um okay. Okay, so uh, responsive design is achieved using media query. So media query specifies a max width, uh, the style source for a certain screen size and all. Uh, CSS max width is just setting a property. It's just a property by itself. It doesn't mean anything. It's just setting a property. Yeah. Uh, so don't be confused between these two. Responsive design can only be achieved through using media queries, right? Uh, we've got well, I'm I'm going up the ladder. Okay, so question number four: What is bootstrap? Right, so we mentioned about what is bootstrap last week, and if you probably maybe listen to it, you might know, right? So front end library, full stack framework, front end framework, site designer. <coughs> It isn't that hard, right? I think. So, uh, okay, not that bad, I guess. So, okay, it's not a front end library because it's, it's, <coughs> uh, it's a framework. It's not just a library. It's more than just a library. jQuery would be a library because it's a single JavaScript library. Uh, but as a framework itself, it's something that helps you do the heavy, heavy lifting at the beginning and also do a lot of heavy lifting for you, right? It includes CSS components, JavaScript components, uh, and things like that. That helps you do a lot of heavy, heavy lifting and a lot of design 
uh, and colors are already incorporated into it. So it's a front end framework by itself, right? Uh, it's not full stack. So full stack is what full stack means is that it's front end and back end, right? So it's only purely front end and not. Okay, so it's uh, of, of course it's not a site designer as well. Uh, site designer tools would be something like Wix or something like that, I guess. Okay, so that's that's really it. So okay, I dropped. Okay, so what does Bootstrap not include? Oh, this is hard. CSS, Webpack, jQuery, React JS. Oh, this this is a bit hard. What does it not include? I I I see a lot of answer just now. Done. If it. Alright, four, three. Okay, so it, it does not. Okay, so uh, pretty good actually, I guess. So most of you know what it is, right? So it's a front end framework that has both CSS components and JavaScript components. You are uh, basing on the jQuery library. Actually, it doesn't really include the jQuery library by itself, right? Shit. But okay. Uh, Webpack is the tool that allows that's for building. Uh, that you might we probably would be learning in the second part to JavaScript probably maybe. So it's a tool that allows you to do packing and stuff. So React JS is a it's a library by the by Facebook. Currently, your Facebook.com and all that they uses React JS and not and probably not jQuery. Okay. Whoa. I'm so strict. Debo, who's Debo? Debo, Debo. Okay, I don't know who. Okay, so uh, in Bootstrap grid system, how many columns are there in two rows? 24? 21? <laughs> 12? 6, 9. What's 9 plus 10? 21? What's 9 plus 10? 21? Okay, so the answer is 24. Uh, so, if you... I, I said 2 rows. So, if you take 2 multiply by 12, you get 24. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I think most of you know the answer. Just that I said 2 rows and... Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, that, that did the work. Okay, so Debo is no longer leading. Should Bootstrap be used for very small projects? Why? Yes. Yes. Maybe. No. I don't know. Who cares? Right. Four, three, two, one. Oh. Okay. Um, shit, I think I didn't teach good enough last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so it does accelerate initial development work. It does simplify cross device design. Uh, at least you didn't choose the third answer. Okay, so it does this too, but it's it shouldn't be used for very small projects because it's very large in size. You have seen how many kilobytes it is. It's like uh, 300 and then you have the jQuery library and stuff and it's really, really huge really. So it's it's really bulky. So if, if you're really doing a very small project, you should be just writing your own CSS styles and that should be it, right? So uh, yeah, so the correct answer is no, it's very bulky and slows down the web. Okay, so not a lot of people got it correct. Okay, so now we're on the PHP part. What is PHP? Alright, so a uh, very simple question. Oh, I didn't put in simple answers. A server-sided pre-processing pre-compiled language, a server-sided pre-compiled language, a server-sided pre-processing scripting JIT language, a server-sided pre-processing scripting interpreter. <laughs> I'm out of breath already. Time's up. Yeah. So it's the fourth answer actually. Uh, so it's 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 arguably pre-compiled, but it's more. It's actually a, there's 
it's an interpretation. So initially when I when I explain about it, so when the user visits the website, so what happened is that the user will hit Apache and then Apache a web server, right? So Apache will then send them see that oh it's a PHP and then it sends to a PHP interpreter. Right. I say PHP interpreter, right? Of course it will be an interpreter language, right? And uh why is it a pre-processing? Because it pre-processes the request and then outputs the in, uh, information out. So there are languages that are not pre-processing, such as uh, Python. Uh, they are not pre doing pre-processing and Node as well. Yeah, Node doesn't do pre-processing, so it's a server by itself. Okay, <coughs> and it's of course a scripting language, right? Okay, so yeah. Okay, so uh, the first the winner didn't the first first person didn't get it correct, you know. So no worries. What does PHP stand for? Does it stand for human rights? <laughs> pre hypertext processor, pre hypertext. Preprocessor, PHP hypertext preprocessor, post hypertext preprocessor. Okay, so how many got it correct? Okay, not bad, I guess. Quite good. Uh, <coughs> it's a uh, it's a recursive acronym. So you got PHP hypertext preprocessor. So it's P H P. Do you see it? We do it. Uh, so uh, it's not. PHP like that, right? So that, that, that's it. Uh, there's, there's no explanation to this. It's just a definition. Right. Okay, so the first, first person is. Who is this? I war. It's the highest climber. So I'm, I'm wondering if this person has climbed Mount Everest before. So to run PHP, it needs dot 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 dot. So, like, you know, when people send me messages and then they like. They always put this dot 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 behind, then I'm like, what? Why? Then like okay. So what does it need? What what do you need to run PHP? Well, do you need electricity? Thumbs up. Uh so okay, we got a not very good split actually. So it needs a uh we've we've shown the diagram before, so okay, so the the quest sends to the web server. The web server then sends to PHP. It knows that it's a PHP file. Then it sends over to PHP interpreter to interpret it, and then sends back to web server to serve it. So it requires only two things: PHP and web server, right? That's at least for the PHP five. Whereas PHP seven, you can actually run without a web server. Uh, I'm glad you none of you chose the blue one. That's good. Uh, so it doesn't need a database to run. Okay. Uh, for a minimal setup, you only need just this tool. You don't need any database, right? Uh, it doesn't need HTML to run either, right? Okay. So the first person still hasn't increased, which is a good and bad thing. Uh, question eleven: How do you begin a PHP file? Cause so easy, right? There's no need to begin it. Wow, that's fast. Okay, good. Wait, really? Did, did someone really trust this? Okay, uh, good. It's, it's good that majority of you know that it's the angular bracket question mark PHP, right? Giveaway question, right? So easy. How is a PHP variable declared? Uh, this is easy. This dot some variable equals law. Some variable equals law. <laughs> law. Uh, so majority got it right. Uh, so this is uh, in the underscore format. This is in the camel, camel case format. Both are correct and it will work. But uh, uh, what is that? In PSRs or PHP standard recommendations, it's preferred to use underscore instead of camel casing, right? So this 
technically speaking, the blue one is a bit more correct, but both works, right? Okay, good. So the first person has risen. Okay, polar, polar bear, or something, right? How do you end a PHP file? How do you end it? Right, so I've never mentioned this to you at all, if you notice. I've never mentioned this to you before, right? Did I? Okay, so, uh, yes, there's two answer. There's no need to, and there's a question mark and dollar sign. Right? And, oh, what dollar sign? Oh, question mark in an angular bracket. This is the way. Uh, the blue one is not correct. That was a trick answer, I guess, that trick people. So uh, you, you don't actually need to end a PHP file, but if you want to, you can, I guess. You want to end a certain part of a PHP and then input HTML data, you, you can use this. All right. So next, wow, Polar took over. Oh, 404 is making a comeback. Right. <laughs> so what is the default type of a PHP variable? Right. Integer, string, juggling, there's no default, it needs to be defined. Integer. I, I spelled this correct, right? So we're juggling. Right. <laughs> I think I need to kill myself right now. <laughs> okay, so uh I think I didn't go through this deep enough, I guess. So by default, uh, the PHP is uh it will take whatever you pass it in and then it will change and morph to whatever you it needs, right? So it's a juggling variable type, right? It juggles around, right? You, there's no need to convert from an integer to a string. There's no need to do manual conversion. Uh, it's a weekly type language, right? So it's juggling, right? So this tree is um, wrong, right? And not right. So it's left. Uh, did the first person get it correct? I think, maybe. That's good. Which of the following is a logic statement? Okay, this this is a very stupid question actually. All of you will get it right if you answer. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so yes. Uh, all of them are logic statements. Uh, no, no points for this question actually. Just testing, yeah, you know, just testing. Which would output a variable value? What is the answer actually? Oh, okay. Okay, good. Majority of you got it right. So, as, as I mentioned before, if you use a double quote, you can actually use the variable right into it. And when you use a single quote, you can't throw in the variable. You must put a you must put it like that, then concatenate it with a dot. Right. Okay, good. So we've got KF still leading the talk. Seventeen. What logic operator should be used to result in a force? Mini, mini, mini more, and just choose the answer. <laughs> oh, not bad, not bad. So, uh, single equal sign is a set, so you set the variable. A double equal sign is a loose comparison. A triple equal sign is a strict comparison. When you have string and an integer, this would result in a false. So it's the third one, and the fourth one it doesn't exist, right? There's no four equal sign, it doesn't exist. Right. Uh, so I think we are almost close to our last. <laughs> Which of the following will result in an infinite loop? Okay, so. <coughs> oh, this is so obvious. Eh? Why do I put it in? This is so obvious. Right. Okay, maybe it's not that obvious. Alright, so uh, this is the first one is a standard for loop that will, re will run five times. The second one is 
a for each loop that will run zero times because items is empty. The while false will not run because it's false. The while true will run infinitely because it's true. So as long as the condition is true, the conditional statement there is true, and it will keep running. So for the for loop, right, it's the i uh, dollar sign i smaller than five. That's the conditional loop, a uh, conditional statement for a for. Then the items, right, is the conditional is as long as there's still an item inside the items array. The while false, right, the conditional, the while is loop has a conditional statement, which is just this single conditional statement that evaluates true or false, right. So, uh, question number 19, 19. Okay, this is very simple, right? You've got only two answers, right? I don't think it's that hard, right? Pose. Okay, majority of you got it right. So, uh, <coughs> but some of you still got it wrong. So I, I have to, uh, have to say what is get and what is post again. So a get request is the standard normal request that will that will have the parameters in the URL itself, right? Whereas post, the the parameters will not be in the URL. So it's uh, post is more suitable for submitting sensitive forms like your username and password. So I'm really glad that you all of you got it. Most of you got it right. That's good. So drum roll. And we've got KF, obviously. Uh, who's KF? All right, so we. Hi, hi. Yay, you're number one. Yay, clap. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've got Pula and Pula. Who's Pula? <laughs> uh, that's a very cute name. And uh, Jun. Okay, good. So, uh, three of you, uh, you, you can come down to collect uh, at the end, I guess. Uh, we've, we've got some shirt for you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's it for the quiz. Um, yeah. That's good. So, I hope you guys had fun, right? Uh, oh and... <laughs> Let's just close this thing. Right, so uh, we are on to something this time. So we've done a really in-depth recap and explain and clear your queries of uh, of any particular query. So uh, just a, just in case for those who didn't come just now. Uh, so I just want to show you this. So. Again, the Wi-Fi SSID is Ninja. Uh, password for the SS uh, for the Wi-Fi is password, right? Uh, <clears throat> if you if you are shy and uh, don't feel like raising up your hand, you can ask question on RSFM, right? So, RSF oh ask dot fm slash my full name there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, ask any. Questions if you have. Okay, so uh, for those who, who didn't get the previous workshop code, uh, this is the bit, bit.ly bit URL. Open this up. I'm not sure is this is this an L or I. I think this looks like an L to me. So, yeah, it's an L. Look at this. This is the same parallel. So, uh, copy this and then paste it in your URL, you open up a Google Doc and inside the Google Doc you'll find magical marvels of PHP and HTML and CSS. Right, so yes, we're gonna do the setup again. Uh, we set up everything again from scratch and uh, show you what it's like to be using a painful platform called Code Anywhere. So open up your Code Anywhere and I'm, I'm gonna Briefly show you. Okay, so there might be some issues with your. Uh, for those people who came before, you might have experienced some issues with code anywhere. 
So uh, we we'll have to recreate everything. So and also for the benefit for those who never came before, uh, we will do a very quick rundown of how it's gonna look like. <coughs> So I'm, I'm going to open up codeanywhere.com. Uh, if you have not registered an account there, please register an account. Okay, so I'm going to destroy the container that I have before. Uh, so we've got the, the codes down here that you can copy and paste like a genius engineer that you are. Correct. I feel lazy already. So, should I delete it? Should, um, anyone here have never came here before? Raise of hand. Okay, good. So, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, destroy everything, right? Like a evil person I am. Uh, so, I'm gonna... How do I destroy this? Right, so, uh, go to codeanywhere.com, register an account, then uh, go to your dashboard first. Go to your dashboard, go to your dashboard, yes, go to your dashboard, and you see like default, you see a default project in your dashboard, so codeanywhere.com slash dashboard, there will be a default project, delete that default project, oh wait, but no, you can't delete it, see when, when I try to delete, I don't, I don't think I can, right, are you kidding me, yeah, I really can't, so, uh, okay, so create, uh, create a project, Create a new project, then delete the default one you had. Okay, so uh, create create a new project in the dashboard, and then delete the default one. Yes. Then once you deleted the old one, go to the, your new project, open up a new project. It will show up something like that, right? Something like that, right? So I'm, I'm going to destroy everything first. Uh. Destroying, destroying. So, um, it's very evil. It's destroying it. So, uh, once you once you come to this page, are you at this page? Something like that. Have you created a new project? Okay, just just give me a moment, right? So right now we have the new project here and we are gonna right click here. Right click. Uh new connection, you see this new connection thingy here. Click onto it and I have to decrease my screen size because reasons. Right, so uh, search the stack here, pH, and then just type pH is enough, right? And then you see this thing here. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, so uh, it's PHP, then this thing, then SanOS 6.5. Click onto that. Click on that thing, then name it. Then give, give your container a name. Right, something like a very creative name like John Cena. Uh, and then press create. Right, so it will say create create container. Yeah, so it will say, oh, I'm creating a container right now. So uh, if you are experiencing issues with your previous container, uh, try to boot it up. If when you boot it up, it doesn't boot up, and you're still having some issues, destroy it and then recreate. Yes. So. Uh, yeah. So right now it's deploying the container and we are having so much fun. Right. Uh, are you seriously kidding me right now? Okay, there we go. Great. 
fantastic. We've got the container up and running, and this thing over here will open up, and you see this thing. And you see this URL down here. You see this URL? It's tiny. It's it's a URL. Okay, you have it on your container as well. Click on to your one. Don't 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 copy my one. Click on to your one, right? Then you should see something like that. Click on to your URL. You should see something like that. You see something like that? Great, fantastic. So we got things running ready. So right now, right, we're gonna do what we have did before, which is uh start doing the copy and paste. So the first one, the first one we have is index.html. So here you see the the line line thingy thingy connection thing. Right click here, create a new file, name it index. Ah, I don't even know how to spell. Index.html. Right. Uh, make sure it's everything small letter. Everything is lowercase. Index.html. Press OK. Then open up the file. Then go here. Begin your journey of being a genius engineer of knowing how to copy and paste. Right. I can't even copy and paste. So I'm trying to copy and paste. Ah, really? See, I, I, I'm not a master at copying and pasting. So I paste it here. And then I scroll down some more and then I paste it, right? Well, this is a tedious thing. This gets me tired. Ah! Shikes. Whoa, 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 are you kidding me? I think I'm stupid or something. It doesn't like me. There we go. Wow, that was tiring. So and uh, paste it. Am I missing something? Yes, I am. Wait. Yeah. Okay, good. So we've copied the index of HTML. Press Control S to save your file. Once you've done that, you may proceed to copying the second part. Oh, this is this is really tiring. Okay, so uh, create a new folder. Assets. Name it assets. Then create a new folder within assets. Name it CSS. Yes, boss. Okay, boss. Then create a new file. Name style.css. Uh, try not to go out of style. Ha ha. Right, so uh, down here we're gonna begin copy and pasting again. Okay, give me a moment. Copy, paste. Oh, that's it. Well, okay. And then remember to save it again. Uh, create this new file here in the root directory. Create name it login dot html. Okay, so I think I can smell the food. It's outside, but uh, it's still being prepared. Can you smell it too? I feel like I'm talking talking to myself all the time. Right. So copy. Paste. Right. Wow. I should I should apply for a masters in copying and pasting. Right. And then create a 
create another file name in the root directory, print file login.php, right? And then, of course, of course, we're going to do something genius, which is copy and paste thing, right? Can I copy it? Nah, I didn't. So you see, as you can see, uh, this copying and pasting takes skills, right? Not everyone can master it. All right, so uh, I managed to copy this and paste it. Control S, the same. All right, so just to check whether it works, refresh this page. We should get something like that, but we don't have the picture here yet because we didn't have the picture. Alright, so if you want to have a picture, you can go back here, under Assets, create a new folder called IMG Image, and then put in your image file, and you can go to index.html, and you see this thing here, Assets, Image, Exotic, Short Hair Cat. So, whatever you upload into this folder here, the IMG, should be should have this name or something like that, or you can change the name here to whatever you want. Right. So now we've done copy and pasting. We feel like pros already, right? Okay. Has everyone mastered the skill of copying and pasting? Sorry? Sorry? Exclusive from this URL. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the URL. You should see a. It's not an L, it's a capital letter I. Oh, it's a capital letter I? Yeah. Um, I, I must be. Okay. So, everything good? Okay. So. Uh, so previously we've talked about logging in and things like that. Uh, trying to log into a user doing stuff, right? We've achieved the paradigm, the new paradigm of being able to log in, right? By defining our user login information in an array, right? We've achieved that, and we are on our way to becoming geniuses, right? But the question is, how do we identify a user, right? We've got the login system. But then we can't always ask the user to log in every time a person visits the page, right? There must be a way to persist the user or something, right? Does anyone know how, how we can do this? Anyone? No one? Okay, so uh, we're going to introduce this new topic right here. Brand new topic, fresh out of oven, really hot right here. We call it PHP sessions. Yeah, it's the it's the not the latest coolest technology, but it's the hottest right now, right? It's like the yeah. So uh, PHP sessions is about being able to store a an unique session ID on the client browser, right? So client can be a browser, right? So uh, it can be done in two ways. It can be stored as a cookie, or be appended to the URL. Right, so every time you visit a page, the page will have some URL parameters on top. That is the par that will be the unique session ID, right? Or you can be or the unique session ID, right, will be saved as a cookie on the client on the on your browser, right? And on the server side, it does some magic, right? So how how you know you you can identify the user by storing it by storing some sort of data onto the user. Uh, on, by storing the session ID onto the user, but how does the the server knows that this session ID is belonging to this particular session stuff, right? How how does it know? Well, it has to store store that thing somewhere, right? And of course, it stores it somewhere. This somewhere we call it on the server, right? It'll be saved as a session file. Right, so on the server itself, uh, in a temporary directory, it will be saved as a session file. Yeah, and inside the session file would be 
the session data, right? So in that way, uh, the server would know what this client represents on the server, right? Uh, it's unique as well, just letting you know. So uh, if we took a, take a look at uh, php.init and under session, how do we know whether where, where it's being saved at, right? So there's this thing down here, you uh, look it down, look, look, look. So the save handler is files. So it's being saved as a file. The session is being saved as a file, right? And uh, there's no save path being specified. So by default, it goes in the temp directory. So it's just a slash TMP, right? So that's where the sessions lies within the server. And for the user, browser, cookies, or the URL, right? So uh, the session, right, is also you remember your get and post as the super girl, a uh, super, super global variable. Well, for session, we've got a super global variable as well, right? Notice how I say super global variable as if it was a Superman. Yes, it's something like a Superman, right? Uh, but it isn't, right? Is it? So, uh, so the question is how to session, right? How to session? <laughs> so, uh. We're going to do some really, really simple code typing down here, which is really, really, really simple, right? So let's take a look. We've got our standard Angular question mark, PHP, declaration, as usual, to tell the, to tell, to tell the entire world that, hey, we're going to start writing PHP code here, right? And then we're going to use this thing called session underscore start. So what session underscore starts means that it's going to start the sessions. Well, so obvious, isn't it? So bloody obvious, right? So when it starts the session, uh, there'll be session information available. So the session global variable would be available for manipulation, uh, for getting information and setting information as well. So you could possibly do something like that with the super global variable. So something like this, dollar sign underscore session square bracket because it's an array just like the super global variable of post and get right so remember your su a super global variable get and post well it's an array right so for this it's also an array right so we are just setting it this time right we're setting user equals john cena right so whoever visits that particular page right now would have the session user John Cena, right? The people who doesn't wouldn't have this session user thing, right? So it's unique to every <coughs> it's unique to every single person, right? To whoever uh browse it or not. Right. So you have the session ID or the particular uh browser, right? So this session information is then stored and assigned to that particular session ID. Right, so if let's say we've got uh, one person that visit this website and the other who doesn't visit this website, uh, on, only the first person would have this data, the second person wouldn't have it. Right, got it? Sort of? No? Maybe? I don't know? Thumbs up? No? Uh, doesn't look like... Uh, uh, Oh, you got it. I don't think a lot. Okay, so let me just try to explain again, right? So let's say right now is this is a single in a PHP page, right? And we've got John and we've got Mary. John visits this particular PHP page that has this code down here. John would have this session. Right, just this session over here. It will be stopped, right? So you'll be able to understand what I mean by this later on. Right, so but uh, we'll, we'll progress from here first. Okay, so uh, another thing that you all have to take note is that headers must be sent before uh, body, right? So uh, what do I mean by this, right? What is this even, what is this headers thing? In HTML, we've got header as well, right? Right, so, but don't confuse that with this. Uh, in any standard request and things like that, 
you've got headers in your request which states whether it's a post or a get or it can be cookie information right and this is the thing that we want uh, so a cookie that is stored on a user is actually part of the headers right so and as the pre-processing any pre-processing language the headers must be sent before any other content right the browser must be able to know what are the possible information available before it renders the content itself right so let's let's really take a look so you'll get an error from this right we're actually sending the body before sending the headers so we'll get an error from this really simple example so the body is the hello world really simple and the headers is down here right right so that's that's it right so proper way of doing it you have to get your headers sent first then your body simple great so uh, so this is where you see the magic happen right if let's say John visits this page that does this it will say hey John Cena whereas if Mary uh, doesn't visit this page and it says hey session user it wouldn't say anything because it's never defined for that for Mary it's, it was only defined for John who visited this particular web page so as you can see the magic happening here it's it's really individualistic and applies to single users and everything because of the way cookies are being stored onto the user itself browsers right so if let's say John was to clear his cookies he would see hey nothing right it would be just blank right so John better not clear his cookies right or else we wouldn't know we, we wouldn't know who is he anymore after he clears his cookies because that's the only way we can identify the user through using cookies right there's probably also some other ways but uh, this this the uh, this is the way we are teaching down here right so uh, let's let's give a very funny joke right now to sort of make it more funny so uh, John Cena has a girlfriend so any, anyone of you know John, John Cena so John, John Cena is a very famous WWE wrestler I think so uh, so <clears throat> he faces this issue with his girlfriend all the time so his girlfriend asks when can I see you and that was the ultimate dilemma for John Cena that was it he don't know how to reply her because well if, if you don't get it John, John Cena has this phrase of you can't see me so yeah haha -ha. alright so I hope you cringe so this is the second part to using session itself so down here we are introducing this thing called is set right and we are using the inverse question mark uh, the, the estimation mark to inverse the true and false right so if the session is not set the session user is not set then we'll set it if it's already set we won't go and set it anymore this is using a is set function down here so we're just reintroducing to you this is set function down here right well it's, it's pretty explanatory uh, of is set like is this set or not right yeah so and uh, we we just now sort of lock log it log him in but uh we, we didn't know how how we lock him out how to lock the user out so to lock the user out you need to do session start again and do unset session user so it's basically unsetting this session uh array detail particularly to this user here right so the detail there the variable will be unset will basically be you know reverse of setting right so when you set it's using an equal sign right so when you unset something it's using unset function right simple clear uh, not clear 
Okay, so uh, let me just explain. So you know you got your equal sign to set a variable, right? Then if you want to unset it, like remove any value in it, like just, just completely throw away the, the value inside of this particular particular variable, you just you, you use this thing, this function called unset. So it unset the particular variable, right? So down here, you've got the super global variable session and in, we are inspecting into the this array particularly to the user variable, uh, user okay so that's that's really it to how to lock the user up right so uh, before we get any further uh, into more complex stuff we can have our lunch break uh, pizzas is outside uh, let's be back here, let's say around 12.45 Good, okay? Is it Apple time? Or you want more time? Okay, let's say around 12.50 uh, 12.50, okay, good So break until 12.50, the food is outside right at the munch area uh, It's at the piano there, if you, have, if you don't know where is it uh, You can follow us and we'll bring you there uh, Or leave the rules and you lock up Okay, uh, please leave the room because we need to lock the room up. Just for security, because all your laptops and your belongings are here. So if please bring all your wallets and phones, just yeah. Are you teaching me something very important? Okay. No, no, it's okay. No, I don't know like when to tell you. Yeah, it's fine. I think they look very confused. Everyone look very confused. <laughs> So this is a super global variable that is an array. Then what's inside this? Like what is it called? Okay, so inside this array, we've previously in this slide we have defined this thing here, right? So we've defined this the array, right? Yeah. Then we are setting the array key. We are looking into the array key of user, which is probably not defined. And it is not in this case. It's not defined yet. So we are set uh, looking into this key. We are just looking into this key, and then we are setting equals set the value right. S set to John Cena. And then this this function basically ch check returns a true or false value. Yes, this this is set. It's just checking whether is uh, this value here, this super global variable array, and this particular key within this array is has a value. Yeah, I remember, like what's this thing called? It's a key. Is it called? Yes, this is a key. And it's part of so the this array. is key. It's yes, it's inside the array. Uh, so in an array, you have a key and a value. Yeah. So yeah. this is the key, and this is the value. But how how many va like value can the key store? Okay, so uh, it can. S okay, for integers, it's up to thirty-two bit. For string, it can be as many as much as your memory can support so if you if uh, you if you put an extremely long string right and you run out of memory of course you like, can, you, like how many can you store like the variables wise oh you can store you can even store it in, inside another array you can store array inside array 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 then oh, yeah, okay. yeah. infinitely and okay. yeah okay yeah thanks okay um, hello. hello so um, I think I'm going to ask like a stupid question yeah. like No, no, there's no stupid question, yeah, what is it? And maybe uninformed questions Uh, 
HTML or like CSS or something? Okay, so uh, you've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the front end. Okay, so this kind of things is enough to do a website. You've got uh, actually just HTML alone is enough to do a site without anything on it, right? Uh, so CSS styles it right, mm. and then makes it look nicer. Then JavaScript mm. adds the interactivity there. Mm -hmm. Then this this these three components would suffice for a website. But let's say you want to do something more dynamic. Mm -hmm. You want to customize content for the user. You want to be able to lock the user in, register the user, and things like that. You need some dynamic things, right? Because HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they are static. They can't be changed on the mm -hmm. fly, mm -hmm. right? They are content that cannot be changed on the fly. So you need a server-sided language, mm -hmm. like probably PHP, mm -hmm. to be able to do some magic and then like do whatever it needs to output dynamic data uh. so these data are all dynamic and can be changed to whatever you want it to yeah we're playing with the variable inside the whole coding thing right yeah yeah so this is the this is the server-sided programming stuff in which is php uh. More of like you go a website, like a yeah. uh, website, right? you see the website is always the same thing. But then for stuff like Facebook, it automatically updates every time you visit the page. Right? That's more of something. The idea is PHP. Yeah. Then those websites that display information is more of the idea of HTML and CSS, which is done like static, yeah, which don't change over time. Mm. Uh, to, to physically change, you have to change the code itself rather than just editing the server side. Yeah. yeah something like that. It's not a proper explanation, but that's more of like. Why? The way I see it. No, it's, it makes it clearer. Yeah. So it helps. Okay. 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 So just now we covered a little bit on the sessions part of PHP and how how we store cookies and stuff in the brow on the client browser. Uh, yeah. So hold on. So we cover a bit on sessions and how it's stored on the client side and on the server side, right? So client side, you have the cookies, server, you have the session files and things like that, right? So uh, no problem with that. Things are being uh, going quite well so far. Uh, so we've looked through how we have to begin the session by using the session underscore start function to tell the PHP that, hey, uh, we're going to start having some sessions going to uh, in start doing some sessions here, and then you then then you can do some session stuff. So like ses setting sessions for the user and things like that, right? So if you don't do the session start, you would not have any session data, right? So uh, here in the just now we previously covered a little bit on the is set function, which checks whether a particular variable has a value. Right, so if if the value is being set in the variable, it will return a true. If there's no value, it will return a false. Then we we also uh, revisited the exclamation mark, which is the inverse operation of a true false. So if the if the output is a true and you put an exclamation mark there, it becomes a false. 
If the output is a false and you put an exclamation mark there, it becomes a true, right? Simple. Then we cover a little on the logging out, which is basically just removing the session uh, data for the user, right? Unsetting it. <coughs> so we've talked about how sessions work and things like that. But we don't really know how to put it in practice yet, right? So we need to know how we can integrate the sessions into our login system, right? So currently we have a we have the login file login.php. If you take a look at login.php, you will have this amazing file down here which says uh which does this, right? Right. So it just once you log in, it basically just prints uh, you are logged in, and once you are uh, logged in incorrectly, it will just say, "Oh, you've been logged in incorrectly." Right? That's really. It. Uh, so we want to we want to store some form of data for the user to identify the user, right? So what what do we do, right? So simply, we go up here, and then we type. Session start, right? So we begin the processing of sessions using our function called here session start. Simple, right? Pretty easy. And then we start to wonder where do we set this, right? What what when should we be setting the session? Anyone knows? When should we be setting a session? Session data. When do we do it in the login path? Okay, so never mind. So we want to set the session when the user has successfully logged in, right? So only when the user logs in correctly, then we want to set, okay, this session username is this particular username, right? That's really it. So that's, that's what we want to do. So let's take a look at our if else statements. Uh, let's look at our for each and then our if else statement, which analyzes the <coughs> our code here. Right. So here we can see that we have successfully logged in. Right. We have successfully logged in here. So this is the part where we can type in our session declaration. Right. So let's type in some code to so called declare the username for the user, right? So down here, with uh, if let's say the first user is Fabian tries to log in and then logs in correctly. Then we get session, our super global variable, which is an array. And then we set the key of the array user into user uh, equals username. So actually what this looks like as an array would look something like this. Yeah, so the session, as you remember, our when we when we declare arrays, we use the square bracket. Right? Don't, don't type in this code, right? Don't 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 type in this, right? I'm just showing you. Uh, so we have the key. So as with any array in PHP, you got a key and you got a value. So down here you have the key user pointing to the value of username. Right? So this is what it was, what is inside this session here. So for more information about how this uh, on session itself, right, you should do a var dump, which we previously talked about in debugging PHP, Use, using the command uh, function here, var dump, right? So something like this. Right, so uh, let's actually 
we'll try this thing out and go to our login .html down here type in let's say two users okay so I'm gonna try login so we went to bottom that thing so this is the bottom result over here can you see it array bracket one result one count of result where use user this is just a really just a sh really just an array right and that's really it nothing really too special about it just that it's a super global variable don't worry about it so now that we we've, we've successfully assigned the session uh session user equals username we now know that this this particular user is this right so let's let's do some I'm, I'm just gonna show you what do i mean by that i'm gonna create a test file okay so you can follow along if you want to so right now i create this file test.php and we're gonna type in some code right Right, so if let's say right now I, I've logged in successfully, so when I go to test.php, it'll say this welcome my username. Right. Simple? Okay, so let's uh when when I log out when I log out, I will then lose that data. Right, so let's let's see what happened when I log out. Right. So session start and then we do this. We unset the session. Right, we can just unset the entire thing and then we lose everything in the array. Right, and see what happened. Right. Refresh the page. Nothing should show up. And then we we go and do this again. Right. Uh, are you kidding me? Then save it. Okay, let's try again. On set. Oh, so, so now it has a problem with saving, really? So now it should be unset, right? <coughs> Let's see what happens first. Wow. Okay, maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Let's see back there. <coughs> ah, there we go. So now now it's unset. Uh it's been unset so now now it says welcome <coughs> welcome blank right that's that's the definition of logging the user out right so just now you saw that i i've successfully logged the user out and then when i refresh the page with the welcome thing there's just absolutely nothing there okay so you, you can see that across different pages different pages just now i was on the login.php page right and when I go to test.php, we still had the session data there because we, we didn't log the user out or anything. So it's able to operate across pages because the session ID is being saved on the user's client browser, right? And on the server side, you have the session file with all the data stored. So that's, that's what happened when, when, you, uh, when you use sessions, okay? 
So that's that's we we've, we've seen like how how we log in the user successfully just now and then we store the username just now, right? And that's that's really what we want to achieve. Right. So you might be wondering what's so good about this ability of being able to uh what's so good about this ability to to even to even be able to log in and have sessions and things like that, right? So uh, if you see any e-commerce store, right, it's able to achieve one thing, which is being able to log in, right? So when you log in, right, first uh, you have session, you know who, you identify who the person is, right? And you're able to customize the user experience, right? So let's say, uh, let's say this person has the name there, right? Has a username. So instead of saying, saying welcome guest or welcome dear shopper we can say something like welcome fabian right that's more uh that's a more customized user experience for the particular user and uh, makes it a lot better for the user itself right so personalized uh, so personalized and customized so uh we've we've done integrating sessions into the login system really simple just two lines of code down here, you see, here. So I'm going to show you again, this line here, and on top, where you have session underscore start, right? So uh, I don't want to copy and paste this directly now. I'm going to copy and paste it later at the end of the session, because I want you all to try and type the code so that you, you'll be able to remember better, right? So let's just continue on. So now we've handled login. What about registration, right? I, 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 we got this. We got this array of data down here, right? We can't be modifying this data whenever someone wants to register, right? Because it's just hard coded data. It's just really hard coded array data down here, right? You have to change it manually and open up the file and things like that, right? It's painful to do that. So well, we've got. The solution to that that was thought out many 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 years ago, not by me, by someone else. Cause we call it database, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so what is this database thing, right? So essentially, it's just a server that's able to store persistent data, right? It's able to store data. That's it. That's really it. in a well-formatted way of tables with rows and columns. So I'm not gonna visually show you how it's gonna look like. Uh, yeah, so with the ability of storing persistent data, it, it also gives us a better ability to do read and write, right? Just now we, we have this array down here. We can read it, no issues. But if we wanna write it, we have to change the file, right? That's not a very convenient way of doing things. We want we can't be handling 100 users man manual registration, right? So uh, for now, we're gonna focus on this particular topic of, of relational databases, right? There's different kind of databases out there. You might heard of like the NoSQL databases uh, and what else is there? Like uh, relation-based database, uh, which is a bit different from relational database, which is based on true relations and many other kind of databases out there available for you, right? But on this topic itself, we're gonna focus particularly on relational databases. So things like MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQL, and many more, right? We've got Oracle DB as well, which is RDBMS, right? So relational databases can be short form into RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, right? So RDBMS for the short form of relational databases. So it's table-based format for relational database. We have columns and tuples, right? And tuples are basically your rows, right? It's just a nicer way of putting it. Right, so something like that, right? So you have a table down here. Do you see a table? Okay, so uh, for the first one, I can't see this. I can't see it. Uh -huh. So we've got the username. We've got this column, column down here. It's the username, right? 
and we've got another column down here, which is the password. If you look back to our array itself, we've got something similar, right? We've got username equals pointy arrow, whatever. Password equals blah, 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 right? So down here in the database, we've got something similar to that, right? So each row or each tuple, each tuple we have here is a new record of data, right? So this is one, one new user. So from here, we can obviously tell that the password of John Cena is, you can't see this, right? And as for Taylor Swift, the password is, I love Tay Tay123, one, one, right? So we've got this two, very, very simple, right? But uh, just a minute, right? So we've, we've got data down here and things like that. We can somewhat search the database for data and things like that. But how do we index things, right? How do we know this is the first one? How do we know this is the second one? Alphabetically? No, we can't, right? So uh, we have this thing called indexing that we need to do in our database. So we're going to do some basic, very simple indexing, which is through ID, right? So for the first one, we'll give it an ID of one. For the second user, we'll give, him, we'll give her an ID of two, right? So probably when the, the user registration was done, John Cena registered first, followed by Taylor Swift, right? It's incremental, right? You know how, how it's being increased, right? So one, two, three, stuff like that, right? Uh, so we're gonna run some terminal commands. So right here, uh, down here, if you right click this thing, there's this thing called SSH terminal. Right, do you see this? Of course you do. So I'm, I'm gonna paste a bunch of codes that you don't really need to read through. Okay, so, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna paste this SQL code down here, the, the terminal codes that you can run. Uh, do, 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 down here. Okay, this is bad idea. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it here. Oh, it's white. So I pasted some command here. Okay, so don't run it first. I'll show you how it's being how how it can be run. Right. So we just now right click here and press SSH terminal, right? Have you all done this? Right click SSH terminal and you see this uh, thingy here, down here, you can see. And when you press enter, a lot of times it will do this, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to run the first line of command, which is mysql dash u dash root. Right, so, uh, okay, so we pasted it in here, and then we hit enter. Right, so we, we log in into this thing, this terminal, MySQL thing, blah, 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 right. Everyone got to here? Everyone got here, right? So right now, you're gonna do the most simple thing ever. Copy the entire line here, entire thing. Yes, the entire thing, copy. And then just paste that in. You should see this thing say query okay, zero rows affected thing here, something like that. Query okay. Everyone got query okay? All good. So uh, remember, just go here, copy everything from create database, my commerce, down to this last semicolon, right? Remember the semicolon is very important 
is to signify is the end of the MySQL command. So right now I, I'm, I'm done here, right? I'm done with creating the database with table down there. So I'm gonna exit this by typing exit. I'm just gonna type exit. And here at the, I'm ex I've exited the MySQL thing. Everyone got it? All good. Raise up your hand if you have any issues, right? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna close this terminal because, and you should too because you don't really need it now. Actually, so yeah, we we run the terminal command, which was really really simple command. Uh, let's go through this really quickly. I'm just gonna grab some water. No sweet drinks allowed. This thing really wakes me up. So, uh, I'll briefly explain to you what we've just run just now, right? Because we, we want to understand what we run. Right? Not just blindly copy and paste codes, right? So, uh, so we're actually diving into a new, new world again, right? So, we're diving into this strange world of SQL commands, right? This really, really fascinating world. Right, with this really really fascinating command lines that you don't really know and you should start knowing now. So okay, I'm gonna explain really quickly to you what we are trying to run here in terminal commands here. So at the first line we're gonna call to MySQL, which is a, a database that we've I've earlier on mentioned. So MySQL is pre-installed in your container itself and you can run this you can bring up this terminal by tapping in MySQL, right? But in order to bring up the MySQL terminal, you need to log into MySQL, right? So by default, you got this user root, right? So here we specify the user as root dash u represents user. Root is the username, of course. Then by default, your not secured container has no password. Right, so we don't need to specify any password in public, right? And we are able to log in to the terminal uh, for the bicycle terminal. Then you you see that oh uh, Oracle blah 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 blah, right? Uh, then we proceed to running some com some strange commands, right? So the first command that we ran was create database my commerce. So what this does is it creates a database with the name my commerce. Simple. Then we proceed to say use my commerce, which means is to tell the terminal to hey, let's go look inside this database named my commerce, right? Because in a single MySQL server, you can have multiple databases, right? So right now we've created a database of my commerce. And when we say use my commerce, it's looking into this particular database named my commerce. And then after we look inside, we're now inside my commerce database. We're gonna we run this command to create a table. You just now saw that table just now, right? So it's exactly what we did just now. It was exactly the same thing. Right? You saw this? This was what exactly we, we created a skeleton, we created the structure. Without this John Cena and Taylor Swift data, of course, there, there wasn't any data inputted. It was just a structure down there. So we created the structure ID, int, temp, unsigned, not now, auto increment. So unsigned means it's an it's a unsigned integer, which means there's no negative value. Right? There will be no negative value. It will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all this. And the, of course, we don't need any. Uh, of course, we don't need any negative values here. We don't need any negative values, so we're gonna make it outside, so that we'll be able to utilize more byte space for bigger numbers, right? Then we we down here we say not now. So not now means that you remember the now that we previously mentioned in PHP variables, now and void and things like that. So not now means that in this 
in this col uh, column, any value that goes inside must have a must be a value, right? It it must not be null. It must not be left empty, right? Then auto increment means that every time we insert a new record, the number the in the ID will automatically increase by one. It automatically increments by one. So when we when we when you just pass in username and password, the ID will be set for us. We don't need to handle the ID setting. Right. And then we've got username, which is bar child 64, which is uh, 64 characters, variable characters of 64, and not now. Right. So we are expecting the username to uh, be specified. Same goes for the password. And we set the primary key to ID. So this is our primary key that identifies uniquely the data that we have here, right? And then this is this is not really important, the engine being you know DB I'm not explaining really much. Uh, the character set. Do you remember in HTML we talk about character set? UTF, A, ASIC and all. So down here we are setting the character set to UTF 8. Right? So all these are the character sets that are, you see, even different uh, languages uses all this kind of stuff, right? So now we are done with explaining the boring parts of the terminal commands that is really dry and boring. Let's move on to what database really is, right? So uh, I'm gonna, there's, there's gonna be an incoming joke, so uh, try to laugh if you can, right? So uh, many languages can communicate with the database, so uh, languages such as uh, Ruby and uh, this thing here. Do you know what is this? So uh, this is a uh, Python. Ha ha! I don't know. Ha. Okay, never mind. Uh, so okay, so different kind of languages can communicate with different uh, with the same database and things like that. We are still interacting with the data with the same exact database, right? So we got. Ruby and you have the Rails framework and then you can still communicate with the same database which is MySQL. You've got Python and probably have some Django for your web and things like that. You're still communicating with the same web I guess not web. Database server, right? Still the same select, insert and create and the blah blah blah, right? So um, now that we've done the really basics of database, we're gonna move forward to what we call data objects, right? So, data objects, wait a minute. What is this objects even, right? We've never mentioned this objects thing before, right? Not even in PHP part one. What is this, what is this thing? Okay, so, uh, well, it's a variable type, right? So, you had your integers, you had your strings, you had your floats, you had your other stuff, right? So, we are welcoming your latest addition to your collection of variables we have objects it's a it's a really brilliant thing to have right so uh, we're gonna tr we're gonna we're gonna look at what we can do with objects itself first right so how objects would roughly look like we're not gonna go into object oriented programming itself because that would be a whole new topic by itself already so we're only going to briefly, briefly, briefly look at very, very simple things that any layman could understand, right? So down here, we do what we call an instantiation of an object, right? <coughs> so down here, sum underscore object equals new sum object. Is it right? Yeah, right, right. Uh, doesn't look right, actually. No, it's not right. This is what happened when you code in midnight, right? Uh, so I think this is wrong, and should be no, this is correct, right? JFC. Okay, well, let's look at the documentation, right? <sighs> So 
So when when it's DAO, always use what we call uh, PHP documentation, which is php.net, where you can refer to the documentation itself in classes and objects. So we're gonna go we're not gonna go into the uh, the classes itself. We're just gonna look at what was I trying to do. Yeah, I, I was wrong. Yeah. So it's no wonder it looks odd. Right, so Down here, we've got some, uh, what am I doing? Okay, so down here we've got some instantiation of the object itself. So, you can see down here we, we, we said new some object, right? So, this some object is actually a class, right? You just need to know that it's a class that exists. This is in existence and it's somewhere that we have linked to. Right, and to get a copy of that particular class, we want to copy the entire class and put it into as an object. We do this new whatever class, which is the sum object, and then we get a new object. So this process is called object instantiation. Okay, not to worry if you don't don't really understand what I'm trying to do here. Even what is this crazy guy talking about? Even so. Later on, we'll be typing some codes. I'll, I'll be showing some codes which would make more sense, right? We'll dive more into the PHP data objects, right? So why why do we even have data objects in the first place? Is that we want to execute the queries just now we had, right? We have the database, but in order to talk to the database and extract data out, we need to use what we call SQL commands, right? So uh, we need to write SQL commands to talk to this database that we have. So PHP data objects is a layer of uh, is a layer that help us interface with the database. Right? It's a layer that help us interface with the database. It's really that simple. Right? So uh, the thing about it is that it's based on objects. So we just need to know that this is how objects instantiation work. Right? We're not gonna go into details, this is how it looks like. Uh, Try to feel it, like how how it looks like. It's really just like any other array decoration and things like that. Except we got a new and then the class name down there. So, so let's do, take a look at the PHP pedo, uh, PHP data object code. So uh, don't be scared by this. We're gonna look at this shortly. So down here, we are actually doing what we call an instantiation. Dollar sign dbh equals new. PDO, there's a space here by the way, PDO, open parenthesis, uh, what is this, single quote, MySQL, which is the database that we have, colon, host, equals local host. So the host right here is, where is the database, right? The database must have an IP address, right? Or it could be the same server itself, right? So we can point towards the same server, which is localhost, followed by the database name that we have given just now. What was the database name that we given just now? My commerce, right? So that was the database name that we gave, we gave it just now, right? Uh, finally, followed by the username, which was root, and the password, which is blank. We, didn't, we don't need any password. So down here, we have instantiated a database connection, a pedo, a PHP data object. I'm gonna pronounce it as is it pedo? It sounds <laughs> yeah. PHP data object sounds better, right? Uh, so PHP data object in uh, object here. Connection. It's a connection to the MySQL database that is located on the same local host. So what we are doing is that we're doing exactly what we have done just now. Right. Just now, we went to do this. We went to do this, right? We went to open up the terminal, and we went to type in MySQL dash u dash root, right? And we open up this, right? Then after that, we went to switch to the database, which was use my commerce. Right, so 
what it did was what this part did was really just this, right? So when it when it instantiated the new connection, it was doing this. It was doing exactly this. Right. Really, really that simple. Right? So but it's just that the code has been transformed into a PHP format. Right. Uh, so that we can do we can do more things in PHP instead. Right? So uh, do you understand this first part? So long? Okay. See so a few heads nodding. So this is what we really have here is a connection object. Right? We have our connection object. And once we have a connection, we can do something, right? We have that connection, we have a link between our PHP and our database. We have established a strong link, an authenticated link that is there. Right. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna uh, we wanna do some querying to the database, right? Uh, so this is when we try to check whether we have this is when we try to check the database for the user and the password, right? So let's take a look at a second statement now here. STM, STMT equals DBH. So as you can see here, we declare the connection here. And we, we put this arrow, we put this dash and then the arrow there. So it's something, it's, it looks familiar to the array, right? Which we had the equal sign then a, a pointy arrow over there. So in here, we got we are calling towards the com, uh, the function that exists within the object. So the object that we have created just now does have a function within itself. So objects are a bit weird, right? You can have functions within objects. Okay, so unlike different. Uh, like unlike arrays where you can't have, uh, actually can you? Yeah, possibly could in the new. Okay, so let me give a better example. So unlike integers, right? Integers you can't have a function within it, right? You can't have that. Uh, so whereas for objects you can, right? And we're actually calling the function just like what we have previously done. So like echo, echo and all that, they are all functions that are pre-built. Whereas this function is pre-built into that object itself. So we call to prepare. So we are doing some preparations here, right? We're gonna cook something, right? We're gonna cook the next Gordon Ramsay dish that will burn the entire world, right? Uh, so we select asterisk. What is this asterisk here? Right, so this asterisk here is very commonly found in programming languages, which signifies a wildcard. And then what is a wildcard? Well, a wildcard means everything. Right, it means that we are grabbing every single thing. Right, so what is, uh, we are grabbing every single thing from users. So what exists within users? What, what did we have just now, right? What, what exists within users? Uh, okay, so what is this within the user's table? Okay, we got three data that exist within the user's table. The ID, the username, and the password. So when we use the wildcard there, it selects all these three. So that we don't have to manually type in ID, username, password. So we don't have to do all that manual work, right? So the wildcard done that for us. Okay, so now, uh, now that we've, we've selected ID, username, and password from users, we want to do a conditional check, right? We just, in PHP, we got equals equals checking, something like that, right? We've got comparison and things. So in SQL, we've also got comparison. We've got this thing called where, where something equals to something. So uh, in this is not this is not setting. So in PHP, a single equal sign sets the value. But in SQL, a single equal sign is a comparison check. Boom! My loan, uh, I think. So 
and it, uh, we are checking the username is a question mark and the password must be a question mark what is this question mark thing here right weird isn't it but wait we want to focus we just want to focus on the conditional that has been explicitly stated here which is where the username must be something and the password must be something right so we previously written some code in down here in uh, login.php right so it's essentially doing this it's really just doing this right it's really just doing this that's really what it's doing right and the end instead of the double uh, double and percent instead of double and percent we have a normal hand word down there right so now we've identified the conditional check that we had and the data that we want to retrieve from the query itself right so it was a select statement right selecting data from users where username equals to some particular username and the password must be that some particular password right then next uh, we're gonna down here we have this username equals ll password equals very secure password obviously that's not very secure right isn't it so uh, then we've prepared our vegetables and meat and things what's the next thing to do we want to start cooking right so to start cooking we need to execute the statement of course so down here we execute the statement so if you see and observe carefully you will see that the question mark here maps to this thing here and this question mark here maps to the password okay so there's something wrong here i'm just going to quickly fix this okay so uh i forgot the packet anyway so so uh, you can see that the username here the question mark maps to this array the maps to this first value of the array and the second question mark maps to the second value of the array you see it it's really just it so why can't we just why can't we just put this the bloody thing into here immediately right we could do that right we could but do you remember the first time when i talked about how we could do something like running around naked and burning people or something like that right we could but we shouldn't right so same goes for this what we're trying to do here is we're trying to prepare and execute the benefit of this is that it prevents what we call a SQL injection right so when we make statement preparations and then we execute it like that nobody can hit your side ready right so uh, it prevents the security vulnerability or actually it's not a security vulnerability but it's uh, an exploit a simple SQL injection right it's really just an in injection we want to prevent right so uh, malicious people can actually drop tables and do lots of things and do plenty of evil things that we should be afraid of right uh, so we want to prevent that from happening if you want to know more about what SQL state uh, SQL ejections are even you can use this friend of ours called Google DuckDuckGo Yahoo Bing all this to help you find out what are even SQL injections and what is it even right so uh, it's a really really it's quite a topic to talk about in in security itself so we are just uh, just keep to this code it's going to protect you from some nasty stuff that's all you need to know right so you see uh, as with the conservation of problems right so you know in physics anyone here study physics nobody here study physics really 
Really? Okay. So in physics, you got the conservation of energy, where you got when at the top of a hill, you got full gravitational potential energy, and at the bottom of a hill, you got full kinetic energy, right? So same goes for this. You have the conservation of problems, right? When you solve this, when you try to solve the sequel injection here, it kind of creates a problem, which makes which makes things more complex, right? But that's in in life, we always face trade-offs, right? And of course, as a human, we know which is better, right? Which is better, losing all your data and getting your entire site compromised or writing a bit more code, right? So there's an obvious trade-off here that we want to choose, right? If you choose the first, <laughs> the door is just there, right? Uh, if you choose the second, good, stay here, right? Uh, okay, so that, that was what uh, we did just now. So, we, we let's try to log in like what we tried to do right so uh, just now we had to select asterisk from users where username equals something something right so now pretend that the user keep in the username in the login form Taylor Swift and then the user also keep in the password of I love tay tay one two three so what's gonna happen well it's gonna look up the table it's going to look at the table of users, which is over here. And then, it's going to look at the first one. Does it match? The username, is it Taylor Swift? No, it's not. So what should we do? We move on. Just like life. We've got to move on from the strategies that we face. Right, so uh, we move on, and we found the username to be correct. But wait, there's still one more condition we must fulfill our ultimate fulfillment statement of password. We look, I love tay 123 is it the same? Yeah, then we get a green light and we get this tuple down here, so the winners goes to the row ID2, yay. Okay, so we've got our winner down here, we've selected this record down here, amazing record, uh, award winning record down here. Uh, so. But uh, we, we, we really just selected it. That's it really. Right. What, what we got was an array. Right. We, we sort of get an array of data that we selected. So in this array, we've only got one. We've only got one data, one, one row. Right. If let's say there's another account that's exactly the username of Taylor Swift and the password is also the same, you get two results. You get an array of two results. So right here, now, we only get an array of one result. Okay, so uh, we wanna do, we wanna, how do you know if, how do you, I just don't, I think I fleshed out the answer a little bit. So how do you know if, let's say, the registration, the login details was correct? How do you know that? We, we know that it's been selected successfully. Then what do we do next? We want to count the number of results we get. So presenting to you the latest cutting technology called Count Rows Found. Right. So we've got this brand new technology down here, which allows us to count the number of rows that was found through the query that we have executed just now. The select statement. What? How many rows of result did it return us? Right. So obviously, when there's no result, when it's zero, obviously it's wrong details, right? And if there's one result, what does that mean? Well, if there's one result, obviously it means it's correct, right? So that that's really basic common sense and really logical stuff we have there, right? Any three-year-old kid will understand, right? So, uh, we transfer that pseudo code that I've explained just now into real PHP applicable code that can rock the entire world using this. Right, so just now we wrote uh, some statement, and then now we're gonna count it, and then, okay, we're gonna count it, and then here, 
Because in PHP, you get uh, when it's zero, it's a false, right? When it's a one, then it's a true, right? Or can be two, it's also a true, right? So we got some some data, right? We got some results. So obviously, the login credentials was correct. So within this if else thing here, within this statement itself, it represents the correct login credential actions that we must carry out. Yeah, so you can see here specifically, we do this dollar sign stmt arrow arrow row count, which is the function which exists within the object. All right, so I'm I'm gonna drink some more water. Tastes good. Tastes like plain water, right? So, um, <clears throat> so we want to know what happens when we failed. When we failed our mission, do we try again, right? So let's let's see what happens when we when we give in a correct username and a wrong password, right? So uh, we get. Basically, zero row count, right? Uh, whereas when you have a uh, correct, you get um, you get one row count, right? So let's briefly understand what our login system is made out of so far, right? So I briefly explained to you like the select statement and the row count and things like that, right? So let's do a really quick, quick system summary of how the login looks like. <coughs> so first, the user will submit the form data, right? So you got the in the HTML input username, password, password, and of course, after that, you get you use your super global variable the post friend to extract the results out, and then once we have the extracted results. We can do a, a pedos PHP, PHP data object select. We can run a SQL select statement, and then uh, we check for the number of rows we got from the result, right? And then if there's a row count, then we create the session with the user's ID. If no, then give error of course. So that's basically what we have so far as this cast of the uh, login system by itself. Pretty magical and pretty easy. So let's do our integration right now. All right, so uh, we're gonna start typing some, we're gonna modify login.htm, uh, login.php to suit the, okay, just to, to be able to integrate our PHP data objects into the login system, that's it. Right, so we're gonna mainly focus on logging up HP. So open up your code anywhere account, uh, code anywhere editor. So right here in login of HP, we see that we've got these users here, right? We've got some users, and of course we got our for each loop, right? So we're gonna remove this array here. We're gonna remove this array here because we don't need it anymore. Right, because all user data is stored in the database. So we no longer need a user array to store our user data. Right? So right here we've got username, password, login, false. Okay, so now we're gonna do the pedos a PHP data objects. We're gonna try to establish the connection first, right? So let's go ahead and establish the connection. Right. Uh, hold on. So I'm gonna pack this in. DB if DBH equals new PHP 
data object. Open parenthesis data uh, database type, which is MySQL, colon, host is equal uh, set to local host, semicolon, database name equals my commerce, which was the database that we connected, uh, we created just now, comma, space, single quote, R O O T, single quote, comma, space, single quote, single quote, close parenthesis, semicolon. Okay, so this is our, this is our, essentially our, our statement that is able to instantiate a new PHP data object connection. Right, so in DBH, we have a connect, DBH is essentially now a, data, a database connection object. This diary. <sighs> so now that we have achieved our brand new achievement of being able to create a brand new instantiated PHP data object connection, we're gonna begin to do our selection, right? So let me go and copy and paste stuff. So down here, we've got dollar sign stmt equals uh, dbh blah blah blah, right? Uh, let me just okay. So stmt, right? You might be thinking, what the heck is that even? What is this dollar sign stmt? Well, it's a short form of statement, right? So, uh, what this statement is, is this thing here. So this is actually what we call a SQL statement, right? Then we are preparing it. We, pre we are preparing the ingredients first, and then setting it to become the statement. So this is the ingredients that have been prepared as a state uh, as a variable statement so we are running a sql select which is select wildcard from users table from the users table where username equals question mark and password equals question mark Okay, so you might be might be thinking, what the heck is this, right? You do you see this <coughs> this thing here? So it's uh, if you look at your keyboard, beside your one, there's this curly thingy, and then when you when you click it, when you press onto that thing, it'll it'll look like that. So it's just right on your keyboard beside one. Yes. Above the above tab you have one. Uh, above tab and beside one. Do you see it? Everyone sees it on your keyboard? If not, I suggest you to burn your keyboard and then sell it away on carousel for five hundred dollars. So now that we've achieved something remarkable, such as finding that weird 
hormone thingy that is floating. Let's try to do something more by copying and pasting more stuff in. Right. So Actually, I'm going to just use square brackets. So your username is here equals HTML entities. Tada! Password. Tada! And then STM statement execute begin cooking with the username and password. So username will then be mapped into into this first question mark we have. Password, which is second second thing in the second key value, uh, is then mapped to this second question mark. Right. And then it executes this prepared statement. And then it starts the coring of the database. The magical magic then happens. The look up into the database itself. So if you were to manually do this in Excel sheet or something, you'll be you'll be facing a lot of problems, right? So uh, that would be a total pain in the ass because uh, of course robots are more efficient than us weakling humans, right? So uh, so they they're gonna be they're gonna do the efficient things because they are more efficient than humans, right? So everyone got it, got it here so far? So everyone understood very clearly how this entire selection process, execution process, and how thing works, all good. Okay, great, fantastic. So now that we have our human weaklings beings being able to understand codes, let's move on. Right. So let's move on to the part where we do the row counting. Right. So down here, I'm just gonna copy this, and then paste it down here. So down here we've got if statement row count. Right. So it's obviously the correct credentials down here. Right. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna copy this thing over here and we're gonna paste it in here. Right? Wow, so much easier, right? And then we're going to delete this bunch of users code down here that we don't even need anymore. Right, so actually we can even remove this locked in thing. We don't even need this anymore. We can just put an else statement down here, right? And of course, remember to hit the save button. So what we did was, we transferred our previous code, some parts of our previous code, into our new code, which was the part which says, which echoes out. Actually, this is wrong. Let me, give me a second. Uh, we could do that, but we shouldn't. So down, down here we are we are doing the setting and stuff, right? So 
a really really simple code based on what we've done so far which is the sessions and database database objects objects and many more right So uh, Jun Hao was mentioning to me, <laughs> to, I think it was just today, that he mentioned to me that he has a lecturer. Is it a lecturer? Huh? <laughs> okay, so I think he has a <laughs> lecturer that basically speaks in a very monotonous way. And <laughs> he, <laughs> he even falls asleep while talking because, <laughs> because his voice was too monotonous. Yeah, so an epic, an epic lecturer that falls asleep to his own voice, monotonous voice. So just imagine the class, how it would look like, right? So yeah, you you probably have even students, most of them sleeping already. So now now we have achieved uh, our basic role counting and stuff and logging in and doing the sessions thingy. Everyone, all, everyone done this? All good? Give a thumbs up or something? I, I see a few. Okay. Good, good. Uh, if you haven't, just raise your hand and stop. Okay? Okay, so all looks good. Okay, good. We're gonna move on to our second installment of uh, our login system. So. We've successfully integrated database and PHP data objects into our login system. Let's do our registration system. Right. So what what was the difference even, right? Just now we were just uh, basically what we did just now was that we select we read data from the database. Right? That was it. We are just reading data from the database. But we're not writing new records, we're not writing new data into the database itself. So we need to do that. Right, we need to do this in our registration system. So let's briefly discuss and think through about how, how we're going to do this, right? So it's really similar to the login system, really, really similar, except we add data in the database, not just check. Right, so uh, so something like that. Uh, don't copy this code yet. We're going to have time later on. So just, just read through this. So we previously had we have the same thing, which is instantiating the database of, uh, database object, the PHP data object. Uh, then after that, statement prepare. This time, instead of select, select asterisk from, we have insert into the user table where you got the username and password values question mark question mark. Right. Really, really similar things, uh, just the difference was it was an insert into and then followed by a bracket values, bracket question mark, question mark. It kind of looked like an emoji down here, I think. Just a very odd looking one. Okay, so you know, like Japanese have some cute emoji or something. This looks like one of them. So yeah, this, uh, if you spot the error, I made the same mistake down here. The array did have a close parenthesis. So, uh, so let's think through about how the registration system will work, right? Actually, let me take that time. Two o'clock now. Okay, so registration system down here. Uh, this, this gonna, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna take a break after this. All right. So uh, registration system down here. Uh, so the first thing is. Well, of course, the user submits the form data, right? And then the PHP server would then do a PHP data object select to check for existing username. So we want to check if you know, the username has been already taken, right? We just want to do that. And then we check for the raw count. If yes, then give error. If no, then we do a we do an insert, right? So we, we don't want to have two Taylor Swift down there, right? And there will never be a, a two Taylor Swift. 
Right, so uh, we, of course, we do a validation to check whether there's an existing username of such before we register. So now, really simple to what we have done just now, let's do this again. So we're going to create two files, register.html and register.php. And for, uh, for register.html, we can copy most of the code from login.html. So we're going to do that. So let's start off with register.html. HTML first. The HTML first, file first. So right now I'm, I'm gonna create the register.html file. I dropped the mic. I'm gonna copy everything here and then I'm gonna paste it into register.html. Right. Then then down here in the form action, I'm just gonna change it into register.php. And then when I go up, I'm gonna change it into register. Registration actually. So in the title, I change from login into registration. Spell check, anyone? Is this correct? It's good, right? I suck at this kind of stuff. Right, so, uh, so again, after we change the title, we go to form. The register.html, form action equals register. Uh, change it to register.php. And then of course change this from login to register as well. And that's really what we want to change, right? That's really it. Nothing else needs to be changed. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it for what we need to change. Now, everyone made the changes. Copy the code from login.html and then paste it into register.html. Then change the form form action from login.php to register.php. So I believe that everyone has changed the code for the register.html. <coughs> this part here. So in register.html, your form action should now become like that. And then, of course, hit the save button. Control S. So now we've done this part, right? Now we're gonna create a new file called register.php. <coughs> did I click? Okay, I did. So uh, let's do what the login has done, right? What is the login done? It went to check for data, right? So let's just copy everything first. And then we paste it in here. Right, so down here, instead of checking for password, right, we just need to check if the username of the same has is really at of existence in the database. In the database table, right? So we don't need this end password thing here, right? We don't need this.
Uh, so we can remove this password. So when there's a row count, the username is taken. If there's no row count, then the username isn't taken. Right, simple, isn't it? So what I did just now was I removed the end password equals question mark. And then I remove the password from the statement execute. Please retain this two thing here, actually. And then of course, uh, this is where we want to start executing, right? So uh, let's take a look our, at our if else here. So if there's a root count, it means that the username has taken has been taken. If it's else, the username has not been taken. So we can safely insert it into the database. Okay, so the logic is there, right? So we check whether the username has been taken. If it's if it's taken, we say, oh, Username blah blah is taken. If not, then we insert and then we say, oh, uh, user registered successfully. So let's do that now. So let's do our uh, prepare, right? <coughs> I'm just gonna be very lazy and just type in STM. So I'm going to type dbh using the same connection. We're going to prepare, prepare. I'm So I'm going to insert into right. Uh, actually, it's it it can it can be small letter as well. Uh, for SQL, it's case insensitive for the statement part, right? But certain data is case sensitive, right? So we want to uh, be careful sometimes, right? So users where oh no no. Yeah, you forgot username and something like that, I think. Yeah, it is. Password values. Okay, I'm gonna hit the enter. Uh, you don't need to hit the enter. I'm just doing it because it is more visible in the single page, so that I I don't have to scroll left and right. Right. So I put a question mark there and another question mark. Right. So that's what, what we did, right?
Uh, oh, uh, there's the SQL statement, which I forgot. <coughs> Just gonna scroll a little bit down. And then of course, hit the save button. It's always important to hit the save button. Okay, all good. Fantastic. Not yet. Okay, not yet. Mm. So, um, in the meantime, while well, people type code, Let's have another lame joke down here. Right, so as usual, lame jokes are always very healthy. So, uh, can I hit something? Alright, so, you know, when you. I've got this friend who had this particular liking of eating prawns with shells. So, when he eat the prawns, there's shells on it, he, he likes the shell because it tastes like an MRT stop. Yeah, and this particular MRT stop is quite well known. We have even a mon 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 monument there. And this particular MRT stop is none other than crunchy. So the prawn tastes crunchy. Ha ha ha. Okay, I see that not many people are typing already, so I guess everyone is done. So, uh, we, we've done this and uh, let's check out our code, right? See if it even works, right? So, I, I don't know if it actually works. So let's go to login.php. Uh, let's go to login.html first. And then let's try to log in first. Because we, we don't have any details. So it should tell us that username is incorrect, something like that. Right, so let's go to register.html. And we got the registration page. I'm going to register something like uh, my name with my password. Okay, so don't told me that the I've registered successfully. I'm going to go log in. I'm going to type in my username with my password. Oh, really? Password. Password. Actually, let's see. Oh, my goodness sake. This is retarded. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, the, the password is not in. So so the it w the registration won't work. Uh, actually, I should clear up my database first. So if you actually tried what I tried just now, follow what I do and clear the database. Okay, so uh, again, again, if if you did what do just now, do this. My sequel dash u space root. Hit enter. Open up the MySQL monitor and then type in use my commerce. With a semicolon of course. So now it switches into my commerce da uh, database. And now I'm gonna show some database first. So, oh, it's an empty set. Okay, good. I didn't even register any data. So we don't need to drop any data. So let's go back. Uh, go to change your register.php under statement 2 and when they execute, there should be username followed by comma password. Okay? Okay, so once you've done that, save the file and then go to the register.html and then register. So I'm, I'm going to just check the database first. So now, now it, it, it will show up in my data database. So now I'm going to go to login. I'm going to go to login.html and try to log in. And it's going to say logged in as my username. Right. So I'm, I've sus we have successfully implemented a registration system that is connected to the database and the login system that is connected to the database as well. And we were able to successfully <coughs> register and of course log in. Right. So but uh, actually yeah so but we we uh, just one last part here before we take a break. So you will notice that in the database, right, my password is stored as password. It's in plain text. So anyone who went, who has access to the database would be able to see my password, right? It's stored as plain text, and we don't want that to happen, right? We don't want people to be able to see our uh, own password or things like that, right? And, uh, and let's say, and let's say, touch wood, okay? If your database was to be compromised, your users' passwords would all be leaked out, right? So, this is a huge issue we have here. Okay, so it actually in practice and modern systems nowadays, people still do store password in plain text. Shocking but true. Okay, so we want to not do that, okay? We don't want to store our password in plain text and then have people screaming at us, you are an idiot, right? So we don't want to have that happening. So let's do what we call a hash. How long have it before? Okay, a hash is not the hash brown you get from McDonald's, but rather a really, really good way of a one-way encryption, right? So you might have heard of encryption before, but with encryption, you could decrypt it, right? But for hashing, it's one way. Once you, once you go there, there's no turning back, right? There's no U-turn, there's no decrypting. There's no, there's, there's no way of really retrieving 
back the password. There's no decryption, right? Unless you do a brute force or whatsoever. So we're gonna hash our passwords. Okay, so it's really, really simple. Uh, we're gonna use this thing called the crypt. So if you look up into uh, KHP documentation, there's this thing, there's this function called crypt. And it, and it explicitly says it one way. Right. Uh, so I'm not sure if our version has that yet. This is 5.5, right? Well, give me a moment. So, five, ah, we don't have this. We are using a decrypted uh, uh, end of life product actually. 5.4 is end of life, I think. So we're gonna use cry. Okay. So cry accepts a string input with a sort. Right. So uh, sort is not the movie sort. Neither is it the amount of sort you get from playing games like League of Legends, right? So it's not that salt, right? Sometimes it might get salty and things like that, but it's really not that kind of salt. Right, so um, it's it's a way of which uh, it helps to uh, it's the algorithm that's being used to, uh, to do our hashing, right? So we've got different kind of sorts here. Uh, we've got ND5, we've got Blowfish, we've got SHA, things like that. But we're going to use this thing called the Blowfish. Right. So let's use Blowfish. Right, so, so the first thing is string. As the string, the string, which is our password, followed by the sort. Right, so we're going to specify this crack Blowfish. So, so it looks something like that, right? Uh, um, do we have hash equals yet? We don't have this either. I should have used PHP 7. Uh, so we're gonna just use Prime and then like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna use Prime here. In, let's implement it in register.php first. So as you can see, we've got our password here. We don't need to turn into entities anymore, actually. Do we? Um, we don't. So we're gonna run this. We're gonna change this HTML and this into crack. And then we're gonna put a comma here. And we're gonna pop in crack blowfish. Right. So this is what we have done to our password. So, uh, has anyone seen a blowfish before? What does a blowfish look like? It looks bloated. And it looks like a fish. Right, so now that we've, everyone has implemented this in register.php. Okay, let's go to login.php and then we do that as well. Where are you? Ah, uh, there we go. So, go to login.php, change the, this thing as well. So, what happened to our existing registration data and login data? Right. Well, <laughs> they won't work anymore. Because we've implemented it that way. Right, so, what we should do now is we should clear our 
uh, we should clear our database and get rid of the previous data that had used had that had passwords stored in plain text. So go to your my MySQL and we're gonna run transit, I think. Hold on. Truncate table. Truncate table. Truncate. Uh, it's been it's been quite some time since I worked with raw SQL. Actually, so that's my excuse. Anyway, truncate table. So now we've implemented this crack, followed by crack, uh, followed by comma, crack underscore blowfish. Go to MySQL, uh, go to MySQL monitor again, MySQL dash u root. It will open up again, use my commas. So database has changed to my commerce. Now run truncate table users. <coughs> okay. So when I now select, I should have an empty set. So now we've truncated the, everyone truncated it. I don't really know how to spell it either, so it's, I'll spell it out loud. T R U N C A T E. T for Thailand, R for. I don't know. R for Rabbit. U for United Kingdom. N for Netherlands. C for Cat. A for. Apple, T for table, E for elephant. Let's truncate. Truncate table users. So first step, MySQL dash u dash uh, dash u root. Then enter into MySQL monitor. Then run the command use space my commas my commas semicolon. Then run truncate table users, and that's it. Uh, I can't really expand this, can I? Yeah, so you no longer have to screen your eyes to look at what I type. Right, so let me highlight again this part over here, followed by truncate table users, and that's it. It will clear your users table and get rid of the, the users data that you have created previously through register.php. So now let's go back to 100%. And we're gonna go to our login. We're gonna go to register.html again. So go to register.html, register an account again, and see what happens. So it says user registered successfully. And then we run the select command. We get this strange thing here. Right, we know your password is no longer synced. It can't be synced in the data database table anymore, and that's a good thing. Right, so when we let's go to login.html and see if anything else has changed. Right, are we still going to log in the same credentials? Let's see. So, yep, we were able to log in with the same exact details. All right, no issues at all, uh, no problem, absolutely no problem. 
uh, in our table itself, we still got our password that is hashed in this with our blue fish, right? So that's it. That's really it for our login and register system. So let's now take a break of uh, 15 minutes, I guess. Uh, so 15 plus 35 is 50. So we come back at 250, which is close to 3. 250. Okay, welcome back from the break that we had. So, so just now we've done our login and registration system that was really functional and had a, even had a separate database for us to do our authentication and registration, etc, etc. And the password is even stored in a non plain text hash format that is really so revolutionary that not a lot of people are doing it. So, it's not really that revolutionary, but yeah. Uh, okay, so we've done our basic login and registration system. Uh, <clears throat> we are not going to go into much details on how you're going to further personalize the experience. You can figure that out yourself by having by changing your index.html file in the index.php file and then further having a uh, session variable down there to see if, to print out the username and things like that, right? So, uh, <clears throat> but not to worry, not to worry at all, because uh, we're not gonna do do that anymore, right? We we don't really have enough time for that anymore. We don't really have much time for PHP anymore. Right, we're gonna move forward into our first world, first class, golden village, red uh, <laughs> JavaScript. Right, so uh, when you think about JavaScript, there's this Java in front, right? But it's it's not it's not Java, right? Okay, it's it's not. Okay, so uh, let let me just give a not a very funny story, but just a few times that interesting experience that most of you might experience in the near future right so i've been to several occasions where you know hiring managers so hr people they were like oh so wow you know javascript you probably can do our java systems right then i was like okay no anyway this is uh so what i'm trying to say is that it's javascript and java it's very different languages. JavaScript is weakly tied, just like PHP. So JavaScript and PHP does have a lot of things in common, except one. Few few stuff actually. So, uh, so for JavaScript, it's actually uh, what do you call it? Single threaded. Okay, so wow, single threaded, threaded, threaded. So it's not your grandmother's threading stuff but uh, more of the computer science threads and things like that, right? So, uh, you might have probably heard of this thing called multi-threading or single-threaded thingy thingy. So, in programming languages, there's also this threads thingy. So, uh, you know our, our, our CPU, so probably my crappy i3 down here has probably two cores and four threads. Probably, I think. So it has two cores and four threads. Right, so for PHP, would be able to fully utilize every single thread I have on my computer. It's able to fully utilize all my CPU. Okay, it's able to do that. Okay, so no issues. Uh, and when it's able to do that, we have this specific term called multi thread. So PHP is a multi threaded. A language, okay. So it's a multi, multi threaded, uh, interpreted scripting language, right? So if you want to put it more cheap as possible, whereas you have JavaScript, which is single threaded, darn. So when it's single threaded, there's always, uh, there's there's a uh, drawbacks and also some good things about it actually. Yeah, although it, it's not able to fully utilize. Every, every single thread. Uh, but uh, actually, JavaScript has been improved a lot. And uh, in 
in some cases, our modern browser engines, such as V8, which is built into Chrome, we call it the V8 engine. And for Microsoft, it's called Chakra. And for Mozilla Firefox, we've got WebMonkey, I think. So uh, these are the JavaScript engines that runs underlying our browsers that makes our life more fulfilling every day while we watch videos on YouTube's of cats, right? So you know, YouTube's website, websites like YouTube and Facebook, Instagram and all, they rely heavily on JavaScript to improve the user experience of whatever you have, right? So uh, be very thankful that we have JavaScript, right? So it's really here just to add interactivity. So you can make a website without JavaScript. Okay, you can. Uh, and you can also make a website without PHP, of course, it'll be static. But PHP adds the dynamic stuff into it, right? And it makes it more dynamic. dynamic. And you really got a full-fledged e-commerce store, somewhat like a full-fledged e-commerce store, right? With a login and register system, right? So uh, it works, it works pretty well. It's solid rock, it works well. Right, you can log in, you can register and everything. Right. But have you seen how the login was like? Do I need to show you how the login was like? Well, you have to hit submit button and then you get redirected to login.php and then yeah, you get logged in. It looks like that, right? Something like that. So that, that was really, really basic uh uh stuff we have there. And it kind of lacks the interactivity. Right. What if we could stay on the same page and then we hit the login button and then it says, well, you're logged or it says, nah, you're wrong. You can't log in with this credentials. You have that. So uh, we can do that by staying on the same page, not even moving from one page to another. And we use this technology called JavaScript, right? So. Uh, so you, you, you might also have seen like animations and things like that. Okay, so some animations uh, are dependent on JavaScript. Okay, although, although you can do animations with, with uh, what we call CSS3 as well. Uh, and some other, a lot of things runs on JavaScript too. Even in the server side, we have Node.js, right? So, uh, so let's take a look, very very basic example of uh, drop down menu. So you can you can see this drop down menu here. It's highly pixelated because I was lazy and I decided to just take a screenshot like that, right? So we, I took a screenshot of this, right? This is a drop down menu that we have on all your laptops, right? So right now you have it, and then with the power of JavaScript, we are able to do this. Wow. Such amazement, isn't it? So you would do this drop down thingy thingy and then it drops down this action, some another action, something else here, separated leg. That's JavaScript. Mind blown. Ho, ho, ho. So that's that's just a, one of the elements which JavaScript add flavors to our lives, right? So um where exactly is is all of this, right? Uh, so how, how, how exactly do we add JavaScript? So in our first session, we've got HTML, right? So we look through about, we, and, and CSS, of course, it's actually the second one, I think. So the second one, we talk about Bootstrap, right? So Bootstrap relies on the jQuery library, and the jQuery library, of course, is based on Java, it's written in JavaScript. So uh, you saw that we explicitly place that particular script tag at the bottom, isn't it? Right, we place it at the bottom. Why did we do that? Well, the answer is obvious and it's written on the screen, but don't look at the screen, look at me, right? So, uh, well, when you load the page, right? You load, load the page like that, right? It reads from top to the bottom, right? 
really simple, right? That's that's how you would read as a human being, even. So that's how robots would read, right? So you are a robot. Wait, you are not. Okay, so uh, when it loads the page and everything, it'll see oh CSS file. I gotta fetch that CSS file. Then it went, it goes and get the CSS file, and then it gets the CSS file, then come back to the HTML document. That process is what we call I/O blocking. So uh, it's a computing term as well. So what what happens when it gets I/O blocked? So the HTML document will not load until the style.css file gets fully loaded. Okay. Once the style.css is fully loaded, then it will continue loading down. So imagine yourself putting a jQuery file, uh, putting a JavaScript file on top as well, at the top. Well, what, what will you get? You get a lot of load time. Right? So the user will probably like, uh, this page is loading really, really, really slow. Okay, so back to the essential of what I said just now. You don't need JavaScript, but it's nice to have, right? So it's not the most important thing. So, well, whereas for CSS, you need to style your everything, right? So of course it needs to be on the top. There's priority for it, right? You need, need, you need it to be at the top. That's for CSS. So even though it's I/O blocking, we still put it at the top. So JavaScript, we place it at the bottom. So when all our content has been fully loaded, then it will start loading the JavaScript files, right? So the user will still get to see the content and everything, and will still be able to read and everything, while the page still gets, uh, still tries to load for the JavaScript files and execute whatever it needs to execute, right? So that is why, at the start, we've chosen to put the JavaScript, uh, the script tags at the bottom, so that the JavaScript files will be the last to be loaded. So let's move on. So this, this is how it will look like, right? So if you scroll on your index.html, your login.html, your register.html, you will see something like that, right? Script source equals assets slash JS things like that, right? Uh, so right now, uh, add this add this script to actually add this script to where? Um, actually, don't 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 add this script. Don't add this, don't add this script. Just know that this exists for now. We'll do some typing later on. Okay. So this this is how it look like, right? So. Now that we, we know how JavaScript functions with HTML and things like that, where it should be placed and everything, let's talk about the syntax of another language. So we've learned several languages so far. Uh, HTML, which is a document markup language. CSS, which is a style sheet language. And we've got PHP, which is a more, of a, com a more complex language. And we have finally JavaScript. But not to worry, it won't be a lot, it won't be as much as a transition to PHP itself. Because now that you have really dropped onto the uh, basic theory and uh, concepts of programming itself, learning JavaScript is not that hard. And PHP and JavaScript are syntactically similar in some sense. Right? Uh, it's, it's syntactically similar in the basic forms. Right? On the most basic level, it's very, very similar synthetically similar. So, how, how do you declare a variable? Well, instead of the dollar sign, you use what we call var. var space some variable equals hello world. Alert some variable. So right now, I'm going to do a really, really quick test.html file. You can follow along if you want to, which I highly recommend. So, uh, create a file test.html and in assets folder, create a folder named js and in, J, in the js, create what we call app.js right. So down here, we, we open up test.html first, we're going to type it out 
standard HTML5 document style. So right, right now I've, I've created a, a basic test for HTML with HTML head blah 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 right so let's take a look at how it looks like so it just paint out like that right really simple and so now I'm gonna approach to app.js and then add in what I've typed in just now so what did I do just now well I type in var sub variable equals hello world alert sub variable. So let's do it. Like that. So uh, alert is a function. Right, so in PHP, we, we've seen like how function has a parenthesis there and then accepts parameters and then for it to be called upon. Right, so for some variable equals hello world and then end with a semicolon as well. You see, it's really, really quite similar in a lot of sense. Here, semicolon equals sign bar, etc. All right. So this is how the app.js looks like, and this is how test.html looks like. I think it's correct. I'm just going to drink some water first. So we've done some pretty amazing HTML document down here, which was what we've learned a few weeks back. And this probably has refreshed our memory a little bit with some fresh HTML typing and some JavaScript typing. So let's go to test our HTML page and then refresh our page and see what happens. It says, hello world in the alert text box down here. Pretty amazing with an OK button down there. You have no other choice but to press the OK button because that's live. Okay, so, so that was what happened. You saw that? Oh, okay, let me just refresh that. Hello world. Did everyone get this? Yeah? This? Uh, the test. Here, yeah. Thank you. I think there was some jokes there, I forgot already. Some really lame one, not the, not the MRT one.
또 여기서 걸어 걸어 서리 Let me let me check. I I probably go. Go see see some of them. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I, I just remember one. Okay, Nema, I'll say that later. So everyone got this, got this already. Got the alert. Amazing, isn't it? Right. You know what's more even amazing? All of these are all static files, right? These are all static files. There's no calling to the to an external server, right? There's there's no PHP involved here. No PHP magic in, involved here. All done on the client side. All done in your browser, right? So it's it's really incredible what your browser can do, right? So um, unfortunately, people misuse JavaScript and then use it to send one million pop-ups at one go, and then it gets really annoying and asks you to subscribe to the mailing list, right? So we we got some really basic alert here, right? That's that's really just basic, right? We are we're not some basic people, right? So so let's let's make it more complicated, because we are complex little human beings, right? So we we declared the variable with alert. We've called upon a function called alert. Let's do something more. Let's do integers, right? So something like this. So let's let's look at integers, right? So var, your your GPA equals four. Then alert your GPA. It comes out four, right? So I I think most of your GPA. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. So uh, other than that, uh, we've got our standard integers, strings, and many many more. So let's take a look at another example we have here. Floats. So, uh, you know. I always joke about with my friend who who is currently in year three as well. <laughs> She's my classmate, and she has four point zero consecutively for cumulative GPA. So I, I was I always we always say she's gonna graduate with a GPA of four point one, breaking the scale of four point zero GPA since she's always that studious. All right. So, uh, yeah. So you got uh, your floats as well, standard floats, four point one GPA, and of course your arrays. Look how similar they are to your PHP arrays. Var floats equals square bracket apple orange pear, right? So, and apple a day keeps the doctor away, I think. <laughs> So if you happen to have a lecturer who is a professor, remember to bring an apple so that your your professor won't come to the lecture. Right. I I don't think anyone got it, but it's, it was really late. So uh, let's let's move on to objects. So uh, objects are a lot simpler in in uh, JavaScript and. I think almost everything is an object in JavaScript. It's a weird decision they have made upon ECMAScript itself. So a lot of things are actually objects. And I'm, I'm not even sure if array is an array or is it just an object. Yeah, so I, I think even an array is an object, if I remember correctly. So yeah, so this is how an object look like. So something like that. You have a curly bracket name John John Cena, Hell Salakos Salako. Okay, this is a this is a really lame one. Okay, so there's this uh there's this gang called the three six nine 
which people call by Salafel in the what 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 like dialect. Yeah, so yeah, haha. It's visible. Of course it's not. You can't see him. And then alert. When you alert it right, it'll it'll just simply say object. Right, let me let me show you what I mean by that. So, so let's refresh our page and then it will say Ready? Uh, did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot, about, uh, I forgot a comma Did I forget anything else? Oh I hate this day. So Google Docs tries to be smart and then like change my stuff into whatever they think it should do. I don't think this is really correct. Yeah, you get the like that. Right? You just get an object object. So I'm, I'm going to do what we call uh, stringify and then we see what happens. Then you get this, right? So the JSON the stringify what it does was it transform that object into string format. So now, now you can absolutely read this, right? And of course, uh, in objects, it's it's always with uh, double quotes, right? So what I did here was uh, not really right. Where's my mouse? What I did here was not really right, but I don't really care. So. Uh, so that's how it looks like. You look at the strings; they are they are all having this 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 double quotes, right? So which is supposedly the more correct way, right? So so that's 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 really it for objects. Just need to know this 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 uh, variable as this as in uh, in JavaScript as well. So our standard if else bar some variable equals true if some variable then alert hello else alert bye bye. So this is our standard if else again which we've seen earlier on in PHP. So you wouldn't have any trouble remembering remembering it. So there's a, a bit of difference here in uh in what we call this JavaScript. So if you see the else if, right, you see that there's a space there. The else space if. Okay, this is because in uh in JavaScript there's no compare there's no logical comparator named the else if. Right? So what, what essentially is that doing here is just that it's just creating an else statement. And within the else statement itself, you have an if. So let me type out what it will look like. Okay. Okay, this this JavaScript is trying to be smart. I mean this this Google Docs. So so you see this this thing it tries to be this Google Docs. Really? Hold on. So this here 
is the same as writing this. It's the same as writing this. All right, so even in PHP itself, it's also the same thing, right? When the else if compare, uh, when else if is used, it's logical. How it how it looks like is actually actually this this code here, right? But when we when we put a uh, else then space if, we make our code look neater actually because there's lesser indentations needed. And it's also pretty clear cut to us, right? So, so this is how the else space if works, okay? So if we run this, we should get polar. And there we go, right? <coughs> And we also got four loops, uh, for each loop, and also while wow loops. Same as what we have in, uh, in PHP itself, right? So it's still the standard loops that we usually see. Right. And uh, let's let's try to do something more. Let's try to write some content. Right. So. Uh, write some text in the body. Sounds easy. Let's copy this code. Then. So, uh, what it's essentially doing here is I just screw this thing. So uh, in PHP, we concatenate with a dot. In JavaScript, we can concatenate with a plus sign. Right. So it's just adding the string together. Right. So some words. So let's refresh the page and see what's happened. Really? OK, so uh, I don't think. Document dot oh yeah right document dot right ah there we go it's not document dot body but document dot right so we've added some content content in document dot right some words right, so what what we got was was this we took this some words. I love Taylor Swift forever. And then we throw it in here. And we add in some other string behind. And ever. Right. So we write it in the document, which is here. After the sum content, we get I love Taylor Swift forever and ever. Right. That's that's really it. So so we've seen how that we can actually add content on the fly using JavaScript itself, right? We've done some pretty amazing work just like that. We've seen alert, we've seen our syntax itself. This, this is just the beginning of JavaScript and how we, what we can even do with JavaScript. So there's a lot more we can do. Let's see what we can do. Right. So we can drink some water. Hmm. 
and continue talking with a bad throat. Okay, so I think I'm probably losing my voice soon. So okay, so uh, so now we we've got we we will do this, adding the ID tag, the ID attribute into our division like that, right? And uh, actually, is this correct? Yeah, this is correct. Okay, so now I'm what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to test on HTML. I'm gonna do some break lines, right? I'm gonna do two break lines. And then I'm going to refresh. Then you see that there's some space here, right? You see that space there? I added two break lines there. So the document on right only appended to the last area there, right? You saw it? It only appended to the last part. But now, what if I want to append it up here in this, in this particular sum content? Uh, well, we can do that with what we we can we can do this. We can do the document dot get element by id content dot write. So let's see what happens. Copy this. Put it over here in app dot js. So it will go and look around for this ID content, right? If it's able to find it, then you thought right, right? <coughs> hmm. So I. Uh, I recently there's, there's a news on the Zika virus, so that there, there was a region that had like uh, a total reported cases of a total reported uh, they had total reported cases for a particular region <laughs> three hundred and sixty nine. So again, <laughs> there's someone someone posted a picture of the mosquito doing the gang chants. Yeah. So yeah, I, I run all this. So let's let's refresh the page and see what happens next. Okay, so hopefully it works. <laughs> no, it's not. It doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. <coughs> so so let's just do it the hack, hackish way. Hold on. This inner HTML equals someone's. Okay, so what I did was I go and overwrite the previous content that we had. I just went to get the inner HTML and then I I just overwrote the content, right? So let me try to pen it. Can I do this? I think I can do this. Let's see what happens. Yeah I can. So I appended using the plus equal sign. I appended the data using a plus equals. Like just how like how you do math. Right. But you can do it with strings as well. Because strings are essentially characters, right? They are just just characters. They are really just an array of characters. Right? Something like that, right? <coughs> so so we done we done this. Uh we got it on the same line, even though there was so it was it's essentially inside the if you inspect the element, you see down here that this ID equals content, and within this div itself, you got some content I love Taylor Swift forever and ever. Right, so, yeah. That's, uh, I've been writing so much broken JavaScript. So this is this what you write in like 4 a.m. in the morning 
this is the kind of code you write 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so well, if you look at it, it's, it's kind of getting a bit more complicated and complicated and complicated and complicated, right? So uh, people will say, please send help. Well, uh, help is here, right? So introducing to you jQuery library, which we already introduced you before, but we're going to reintroduce you again. We know what it, we know that the jQuery library exists, and the bootstrap depends on the jQuery library. But what exactly is this jQuery thing? Right? Is it another SQL language? No, it isn't. It's a JavaScript library. So what, what is this JavaScript library doing here? Right, how much time do we have? So uh, we've got, it's, well, it's really a JavaScript library to help you cut down a lot of codes. It's like bootstrap, but for just JavaScript, right? Something like that. Think of it that way. So uh, we still have our original content like that. But if we have, if we have JavaScript uh, jQuery, which I'm gonna copy at this, I don't trust my own code anymore. So I'm gonna look at my other code that seems to be more reliable. So I'm gonna copy the jQuery library. Where is this jQuery library? Copy, and I'm gonna paste it in test.html right above this app.js right what did I copy? I query jQuery library I copied it already so now I have the power of jQuery right so this what is this jQuery does right so I think this this, this script I typed can be trusted I'm, I'm just gonna copy it all right so uh, what did I type? I think let me just uh, Exactly the same thing. Yeah, they just did exactly the same thing. All right. So, uh, I cannot stress how many times I have to stress this because it's getting really stressed out already. So anyway, uh, jQuery library is huge. Bootstrap is huge. Don't use them if you only just need some parts of them. All right. Don't don't use it if you if you don't need it that much. If it's just a small project, don't use it. Right, writing just your JavaScript. Right, it's 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 fine enough. Right. Okay, so we we did this. Right. So uh, let's take a look at the code again. So remember the hashtag in CSS. Well. They also exist in the realm of jQuery, right? So the hashtag, if you remember, it is actually pointing towards an ID, right? So the ID here is pointed at content, right? So we pointed to content, right? So let's see here. Do you see this? ID equals content, right? And then hashtag content. So what is this thing over here? What is what is this magical thing here? Right? How come it's so powerful? It cuts short so much code. Right? Well, this is what we call a selector. Right? It's the jQuery selector that allows you to select even classes, class elements, ID elements, or elements by their name itself. Right? Or even pseudo classes, attributes. And everything, all of them can be selected using this powerful magical marvels of jQuery, right? So, so we use the selector 
then we use this 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 uh, function called append right so we append whatever stuff we want and then we add it in right so another benefit of using jQuery uh, is that it does the normalization for you right so because of some whatever stupid reasons uh, there are some difference between Internet Ex Explorer and like things like Firefox or Chrome so your screen that your JavaScript that works in Internet Explorer might not work on Chrome right so in the past there was a, there was something like that so front-end developers had a hell of a work to do right and the this small particular company called Microsoft didn't abide by the open standards which the open standards of ECMAScript right so ECMAScript is the uh, the JavaScript itself right so there's ECMAScript versions different kind of ECMAScript versions so right now we are in ECMAScript 2016 so every year there will be a new release of JavaScript yeah so they are aiming for that so there will be a re new release of JavaScript standards every year including new functionalities such as videos, lab, and etc, etc, so uh, but then there's, there's, there's always some issues with those, right? So, uh, so this, the normalization across the browser makes it easier for you because you no longer really have to care so much into building cross-browser compatibility, right? You don't have to spend so much fiddling out why doesn't this crap work on Internet Explorer? What must I do? Right, so lesser time spent on that, right? So a lot of normalization being done for you and making your life a bit easier. Of course, uh, that's for, so now we have learned about selectors and functions within jQuery itself. So if you visit the jQuery website, you have, you'll see, obviously there's some documentation available for you to visit, to look up on. So jQuery.com has this search thing here. You can look up on the functions that are available, such as a pen. Right, so when you hit the search button, uh, are you kidding me? Okay, so I'll just use DuckDuckGo. So we've got wonderful documentation available for this um, APIs. Dot a pen, then you'll say blah 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 insert content blah 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 blah. So this wonderful full fledged documentation for you out there to explore, right? We've previously in we previously introduced to you CSS, we've previously introduced to you HTML, and the guide was to use Mozilla Development Network MDN. Uh, for you to look up on the documentation itself, right? So for JavaScript, you can also use MDN, and for jQuery, you've got jQuery.com, and for PHP, you've got PHP.net, that provides really, really full-fledged documentation out there that really works, right? So uh, that's for appending. Well, uh, let's add in more additional complexities that we don't really need, do we? Yes, we do. So uh, we've got this thing called document.ready, which is like a listener, right? It listens, all right? It listens more than the bosses that talks and does nothing, right? It listens to you. It listens to all your sad things. It listens to your cries at night. Uh, so it's a really wonderful body that you have, and you can use it for the rest of your life. Right? So use this thing that we have here, listeners. Okay, so within JavaScript itself, we have listeners that are really, really nice. Right? So what is this thing doing here? Is that it's listening for the document to be ready. So when the document is ready, it fires an event out and says, okay, the document has been loaded and is ready. Do we launch the nuclear rockets right now? So uh, after that, this listener picks up. It picks, 
it picks up the event that has been broadcasted out. Then they will call to this anonymous function here. Function bracket 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 bracket. Sounds like a frog rate. So uh, it will execute whatever is here, right? So why, why, why do we even need to listen for the document to be ready, right? Sometimes, even when we put it at the bottom of it, we, even when we put it at the bottom of the document, uh, it, the document might not have been fully loaded or some something like that, right? Uh, there might be some scenarios. Or if when you put your, <laughs> you, you decided to be crazy and put your uh, JavaScript file at the top, right? So when that happens, you need this thing called document dot ready that listens for the event of the document ready broadcast. All right. So when that happens, you have this right. So let's let's copy. I'm, I'm gonna just go add this in. It's a really simple function. Um, I don't even remember a simple function like that. So it loads. See? So if you if you if you if your eyes are sharp enough, look carefully. Okay, you see something blink, right? You see the word "I love Taylor Swift" there blink. Okay, see carefully. You saw it blink. Did you saw it? Saw that right. So that was it. It was waiting for the document to be fully ready, and when that event fired, it saw it coming, and then it boom, the text came out and was appended to it. So, so that's what happens, right? So we've, we've basically introduced one, uh, one of the, actually we don't really have a lot of time. I'm, uh, okay, so we basically introduced one of the listeners, the document listener, right? So there are also other listeners out there, so we're gonna really, really cut to the chase. All right, so uh, anonymous function is a function that has no name, right? So what happens? JavaScript is loaded. JavaScript is some of the documents load finish event. Document finish loading and fires the event. JavaScript is loaded. Looks for an HTML element with an ID of content. JavaScript appends I love Taylor Swift forever and ever to the HTML element. That was what happened. So now we're gonna add in a form. Actually, uh, we're just gonna add in this for now. Okay. So yeah. <coughs> uh, this this will be integrated later on. I don't think we have enough time for that today. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this form here. Okay, so. Notice how I don't even have anything. Hold on. Okay, you, you don't need to follow this actually. Yeah, you just you just look at this first. I, I'm gonna briefly. We don't even have time. I've got five minutes to show you what happens. Okay, so. Uh, now we're gonna do a form validation. Okay, so uh, it's gonna listen for submit event. We're gonna point at a form, and then we're gonna listen for the submit event. Right? It's not listening for the submit event and execute the function within. <coughs>
tools na nating <coughs> lessons document finish loading and fire the event JavaScript lessons for the form with an ID login form to fire a submit event right right so we're gonna do like a serialization and then yeah oh, this is this is this is long. So it's going to serialize the data and then uh, become a key and value. So it's, some, it's going to be an object with a key and a value. Right. The key is the name. The value is whatever is the input. So the key will be something like, let's say, the key will be something like username. And the value of the key will be the input. It's somewhat like the get and the post global variable, something like that, somewhat similar, except, uh, so we are doing something similar to uh, to what we have previously did in PHP, which was the for each loop, right, so uh, this loop through all the data, and then we look, keep look out for, for a name, that is user name, right, then after that, we check, uh, we do a length check, check with the Actually, this looks very wrong. This is wrong. This should be. Uh, this should be value. Data dot value. Data dot value dot length. Yeah, this is value, not key. Smaller than three. Then alert username too short. So, basically, what happens is when the person submits the login, and the username is is too short, then uh, it'll it'll pop up the thing and say, oh, username is too short. Right, something like that. Right, so, uh, so this is this is what happens, right? JS listen for the form with an ID, login. It, attach, it attaches the listener to this particular element that has the ID, login form. Right, and it listens for the submit event. Right, and then when it's submitted, then JavaScript looks through all the form data and input and look for the out for the username. JavaScript then check the input for the username and see if it's shorter than three characters. If yes, show an alert with the message. Right, so uh, that's that's it for our JavaScript. I mean not at the end of JavaScript. So but that's that's it for today's workshop. Uh, so let's go through a really quick summary of what we have learned so far. We have learned PHP sessions. How we can attach cookies onto our client browser and be able to identify them. We've learned more about databases, in particularly relational database, the MySQL database. And we've learned PHP data objects. Uh, JavaScript syntax, which is what we've really learned before, which is very similar to the PHP syntax itself. And we've got, we learned about more in depth into the jQuery library. JavaScript functions, the normal functions and all, and of course, JavaScript listeners. Uh, it, we went through the JavaScript part a bit quickly today, and we're gonna go more, uh, we're gonna do a better revision next week. So for next week, we'll be covering the last part, the last part of to JavaScript itself, and deployment, uh, deployment of your website, right? So I think uh, we'll be most likely deploying to Azure. I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, there. Are, so next week we'll be talking into more platforms that we deploy into. There's there's famous ones such as Her Heroku, Azure, Google Cloud, OpenShift, uh, and many many more platforms out there that we can deploy our code in. Uh, deploy our code into for yeah. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to stay behind and ask. Uh, email me or anything. Uh, if not, thank you for coming today and 
uh, have a great evening. And a huge thank you to Jin Hao for doing the recording and Zhen Tech as well for helping out. Thank you.